It's the start of the college football season. A beautiful night here in Clarksville, Tennessee at Fort Terra Stadium is tonight. Austin P takes on the Eagles of North Carolina Central. Hi, everybody. Barry Gresham and Pat Cook. We're up high in the press box getting set for this one tonight. And Pat, and always first game jitters when you kick off the start of a new season. But we've got two brand new head coaches tonight. Let's start with the visiting team, the Eagles out of North Carolina Central, and their new head coach, Trey Oliver. Yeah, this is a coach and Trey Oliver. This will be his first game as a head coach in his coaching career. Over 20 years of, of experience, hasn't been a head, head coach. Now, Barry, you had an interview with him this past week, and you asked him, will there be any added pressure with you being an alum of this school in North Carolina Central? And he said no. I'm not sure if we believe him on that one. He knows what it's like to put on the jersey. He knows the campus. He knows the town. He wants to do this school well. On the other side, it's a coach making his debut appearance for Austin Peay, but a veteran coach in Mark Hutchman. Yeah, and there were some questions for Austin Peay whether that they would go for a younger head coach like they did with Will Healy or more of, of an experienced coach like in Hudspeth. And they went with Hudspeth, and this guy's done it all from high school to Division II to FBS and to finally to the SEC with Mississippi State. He's got the tools to really take this Austin Peay program to the next level, which is that OVC championship that they so crave. Two teams that went five and six a year ago. They're kind of mirror images this year. they got to replace a lot on both the offensive and defensive lines. We're going to see a lot of new faces here tonight. We'll take a break. We'll come back, kick it off. The OVC's Austin P. Governors against the MEAX Eagles of North Carolina Central. Up next here on ESPN+. Plus. Kentucky Wilds. Back here at Fort Terra Stadium, the Governors have taken the field. Pat Cook, Barry Gresham with you upstairs. We're delighted to have our sideline reporter tonight. Let's send it down to her for a, a little preview of tonight's matchup. Here's Bree Houston. in front of a packed crowd. Austin P is favored to win by 16 points. It's Thursday night and tonight is red out night, Greek night and educators. I can feel the energy coming from the from the stands. Very people are ready for some football. John Picaro, senior, out of Boynton Beach, Florida, to kick off. And the Govs, an explosive return game with Kentel Williams back there, one of the best in all of FCS. It doesn't matter how he touches the ball, as long as he touches it, uh, good things are going to happen for Austin P. so makes some uh, good sense for Austin P. to give him the ball with a lot of space to go. Prince Mamadou, Benico Harley back there, all good return men in case they kick it short, and it will bounce to Kentel. He'll get a touch to start the 2019 season, the preseason All-American. OBC first teamer will take it out just beyond the 30-yard line, and we'll see the governor's offense come out first, and we will see. Jeremiah Oatsball, we saw him just a moment ago as Kentel Williams heads over to the sideline. And for Oatsball, he'll make his 14th start. And Patton, the former freshman of the year in the OVC, there's a lot on his shoulders this year to try to get this team finally to the FCS playoff. Absolutely, and it's going to start with him. I know Kentel Williams is going to be the main guy on the ground, but no doubt about it, Jeremiah is going to need to get his passing game started quick, and I'd look for them to get him started early with some good passes. 
You obviously have some changes to that uh, starting lineup this year because of graduation. When Williams gets a touch here, and he'll get knocked out of bounds as he gets it across to around the 38-yard line. Big gain for Kentel. And Kentel usually, last year he averaged 7.9 yards per carry. I mean, he's right on pace for that again, about an eight-yard gain. Second and two, Oates ball, short drop. He will throw, and just as Kentel turned around, the ball was right there, and he'll make the catch right at the 40. Didn't look like Kentel was looking for that necessarily, but it works for him, and it's going to be third and short. He's just lucky he held on to it. It will be short, third and short for Austin P. And, again, we'll check those starters in just a moment. We'll see if the – the Governors can pick up the first down, their first of the season, and they will. And again, for Austin P's offensive starters, they've got some new faces on that offensive line. Kyle Anderton, though, is back. First team all OVC from a couple of years ago, preseason all OVC this year. Hunter Schmeiser getting his first start. Blake Mitchell, the transfer Mississippi State's at center. Bucky Williams, the right guard. Seth Johnson is back, who replaced the injured Anderton last year, and he's at right tackle. Oates Ball will keep it. He's got great wheels across the 50 to the 40. Out of bounds goes J.O. as he's called, and that gets the crowd ignited early. Absolutely, and that's a designed quarterback run for J.O. Drops back, acts like he's about to throw it, and just sneaks it, and the offensive line gets upfield and provides great blocking. A huge gain and a good start for Jeremiah Oates Ball on the ground. First and 10 from the 41 of the Eagles. The Govs with a great start to this one. They want to come out and play fast. They do have a new offensive coordinator on Coach Hudspeth's staff, Tim Zetz. If you come out to practice, Pat, and we've both been here, I mean, the practice is very up-tempo, just the way they want to play. Play action, and they'll dump it off short. A great block, and it's caught for the tight end. Elijah Brown will get a catch, and he'll carry it out near the 32-yard uh, line or so, it looks like. And you're talking about the, the pace of practice, and what that does is that allows this Austin P offense to use their pace in real games. Their offense shouldn't be gas, and they look really conditioned early here. Steven Stokes with the tackle for the Eagles. Again, play action, single coverage. Barnes, a new receiver, almost came down with it in the end zone. Again, that is Keenan Barnes, redshirt senior out of Louisiana. It was Justin Nicholson in on the coverage. And he was beaten, but able to get in there, get a hand on it, make a great play. Yeah, I really like that that throw from Jeremiah Oatesfall. He gives his receiver. Defense, number 19, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. As I was saying, he gives Barnes a chance to go up and get it, and he that physical receiver, he forces that pass interference, and they've got another first down this time because of a penalty. So Nicholson knew he was beat, so the only thing he could do to break it up the pass interference, and Barnes still nearly came down with it. Keenan Barnes played at the co the uh, college that Mark Hudspeth used to coach at, Louisiana Lafayette. Here's Jay Parker, the gadget man. You'll expect to see him a lot on plays. If he can get the corner, he can explode. And a great job of contain that time by the Eagles defensively, able to get out there. The big man, Jesse Malit, who's a transfer out of North Carolina State. When you corral Parker, you're moving. Right, and exactly. And Austin P. I I think they've tried to hide this kid right here in Parker. They haven't put him on the two deep. And they haven't put him onto the kick returns, but he's going to be used a lot this season. Second and about five as Oates fall. Nowhere to go this time. So the Eagle defense will rise up and make the play this time. As uh, Weeks in on the tackle. A lot of new faces on this uh, North Carolina Central defense. As you see their starters, Malid, as we mentioned, a new defensive end. Darius Royster, the guy to watch, number 43 in white tonight. Phil Steele says he's the preseason MEAC defensive player of the year. He's great at rushing the passer. No time for that, though, tonight is the Gov so far, this first series with their tempo. They've moved it right down the field. Oates ball all day to throw, and he throws a pick. Receiver either stopped the route, and it was picked off as uh, Baker, Shamar Baker, makes the pick. What would you see there, Pat, as we take a look? Yeah, it looked like the receiver for Austin P. I think Oatesville thought he was going to continue his out, and he just straight up stopped. And for North Carolina Central, the DB just, just saw the ball and got the ball. A huge turnover early for this North Carolina Central team. And this offense is going to get a chance to 
get some turnover points, and what a great start this could be for them. Plus six a year ago in turnover margin. That led to Miak, and the Eagles get a big one here down in the red zone. D'Angelo Wilson looked like he just stopped the route, and Oates ball threw it right to Baker. So here we go with the Eagles' first look on the offensive end. Pass is caught out at the 10-yard line as it's thrown out to Nike Martin. Martin is an explosive player, junior out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And in starting this ball game, Micah Zanders did not play a year ago, started the first three games in 2017. And Zanders battled that shoulder injury. We'll get the start here as the red shirt senior. We do expect to see their explosive number two quarterback tonight, Chauncey Caldwell. Tell you, the Govs defense starting to rise up here. And that was John Wesley Whiteside, the nose guard for Austin P. He got in the backfield very quickly, and that running back for North Carolina Central didn't have a chance. Well, the marquee man for this Eagles offense, you see him in the backfield, and that's Isaiah Totten. They're outstanding running backs. Yet to get untracked here. Now throwing down, Xander's running for his life, just throws it away. Now that's a veteran move. We heard Coach talk about managing the game, did not try to make a play when he had really nothing there at all, and he threw it away. No, had about three Austin P defensive linemen in his lap and just decided to kind of throw it away, live to see another down, and didn't really try to outrun the defenders probably for the best, and they're going to have to punt it away here are the Eagles. D'Angelo Wilson stands at the Eagles 45. We'll see John Picaro. About a 33-yard average a year ago, his long punt, 55-yarder. He would love to have that one now as he stands in the end zone. The Eagles got the big pick in the red zone to stop the Govs' first series. And now this one just tumbles end over end, bounces at the 38. Will get a very nice roll on the turf into governor territory. And it will roll dead at about the 45-yard line of Austin P. And we will see the Govs come back on offense for the uh, second time tonight. That's going to lead us to a break in the action. 10.20 to go here in this first quarter. Just underway. Each team's had the ball. No score back after this on ESPN+. Plus. Back here at Fort Terra Stadium and Kentel Williams on the carry. He'll get a first down and move the sticks. Nice gain for Kentel, and he's off to the great start as we anticipated. Again, tempo, quickly we go, and Kentel Williams will carry some tacklers across to the 34-yard line. And, Barry, you were talking about the offensive line before we went to break. This is going to be a big group to look at all season, only Kyle Anderton, the returning starter. Now you can barely look down the way the Govs are quick snapping the ball. That was D'Angelo Wilson tried a little crossing route. He and uh, Oatesfall didn't hook up earlier when ba uh, Baker, Shamar Baker, got the red zone pick. The Govs, though, forced the three and out and have great field position, but still no points on the board. And they got all the way down. Zone. They got all the way down to the 10 yard line, just couldn't put it in without the before the interception happened. Third and six, we'll call it. Oates ball, looking left, throws, and off the fingertips. Unable to uh, pull it in for the Govs. Garel Sumare. So Oates ball with the interception on that first series. That's his 15th career pick. 27 touchdowns, but what a season a year ago. Set the Austin P record. 20 touchdown passes, six rushing TDs. Responsible for those 26. Set the all-time mark. Just the explosive player that everyone thought he would be when he came here a few years back, freshman of the year in 2017. Ahmad Tanner's in the back. Backfield, the junior out of Dalton, Georgia. Made six starts a year ago. We'll see some Prince Mamadou as well in the backfield. Oates ball has this one batted down as he tried to step into the throw and that defensive front. A lot of new faces as well for the Eagles, but they stand tall. Absolutely a great job by the defensive line as we take a look at this replay. Jeremiah Oatesfall just tried to step into this throw and he had 
a defender right in his face and just has the ball batted down. And that's a that's a turnover on downs, not the two greatest drives that Coach Hudspeth wants. There's some positives to go in there, but if you're North Carolina Central, you're right where you want to be. You forced a turnover, and you've got to stop on fourth down. If you can get this offense rolling, they're really going to be sitting pretty uh, later on in this game. As Blunt able to uh, bat it down, so we'll see the Eagles come back for the second time. Xanders, little play action, he'll throw and complete it at the 46-yard line, bouncing off a tackle, still on his feet, going down the sideline, and that looks like Mr. Explosion, Nike Martin. Isaiah Norman able to force him out of bounds, but Martin took a lick right near the middle of the field and just kept going. Absolutely. I think he took on Wontarius Bryant, and it was just a, an arm tackle, and he ran right through it. Only had five starts last season. He's going to be the main receiver for this Eagles offense, and he's going to rack up a ton of yards not only tonight but all season. First and 10, 22-yard line. It'll be Totten out of the backfield. He is hit and going to be dropped. Great tackle, Erskine Francis, as he steps up from his from his uh, secondary position out there at corner to make a great open field tackle. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the tackles that corners really don't want to see, but he took that one head on, dove at his feet, and really made a play that helps his defense out here on second down. Second and 10. Pass is caught, dragging tacklers. Nice pickup. It looks like Francis makes the tackle. And this is a physical set of receivers here for North Carolina Central. Their smallest receiver is six foot one, and that's something Austin P hasn't had to deal with in camp. That was a six four Tyler Barnes. Xander's going to keep it this time. Got a lead block from Totten, and he'll go down inside the ten at the eight yard line. Cordell Jackson up to make the tackle from his nickelback position and that's something Trey Oliver he's not going to do a lot of put his quarterback in positions to possibly get banged up he, in a press conference he says we've got running backs for a reason but you gotta uh, at least let your guy if he's got the skill set use it but we won't see a lot of the running from Xanders tonight second and goal from the nine pass is caught tackle able to get him Francis able to hang on As the catch made for the Eagles, Ryan McDaniel, another 6'4 target, a transfer out of Tulsa. It'll bring up third down. Looks like the ball spotted at the eight-yard line. Xander's long count. He'll look back, play clock at 15 seconds. He wants to change the play. Will he have time? Big third down call here. All right around the eight-yard line on third down. Xanders will snap it just barely to beat the play clock. Throws, and it'll be incomplete. Trying to get it out in the corner of the end zone. Norman with the coverage. Trying to find the intended receiver, the big tight end, Quentin Chaplin. And Norman was with him all the way, so Xanders was kind of forced to throw it high and give his receiver a chance, but that's a huge stop for Austin P to force the field goal here and to prevent uh, another touchdown here first up in this game. So we will see the youngster, the freshman, Plant City, Florida, Adrian Olivo. As he makes his debut, 25-yard attempt. He boots it up, and it is good. So a flag on the play, so we'll hold everything. Flag thrown down on the Eagles. It looked like Austin P might have ran over the uh, the long snapper on that one. Yeah, it's back at about the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense, number seven. That penalty is declined. The field goal is good. So offsides called on the Govs. They'll decline it, and it will be a 25-yard field goal for the first points of the game. And that will lead us to a break. 7 one to go in the first quarter. The Eagles lead the Govs 3-0 here on ESPN+. Plus. Kickoff fielded by Kentel Williams right around the 12-yard line. Great return. The ball ripped free. And looks like Johnny on the spot to recover it for Austin P. 
Let's see, that may be Pat Walker that was out there. And that's a second kind of warning shot here from North, North Carolina Central. They've already got an interception, and they nearly got a, a turnover on special teams. They're playing flawless football right now. They're not taking the risk offensively. They're giving what Austin Peay's giving them. Austin Peay's being a little sloppy right here on Thursday night football. Fisher will hold up play for a moment. Our referee, Brad Carell, tonight, we've heard from him a few times. Each time down in the red zone, we had a pass interference call earlier for Austin P, and then a decline penalty a moment ago. So they're going to take a look. The replay booth is upstairs to our left as we're on the uh, visiting side of the stadium here at Forterra Stadium, the press box. And finally a minute to catch our breath. It's been a lightning quick <laughs> start to this ball game. As we anticipated, we know Austin P's going to play with tempos. We get another look. Absolutely. And to the folks at home that may think this is not that big of a deal, there were a few yards gained for Austin P if this was indeed ruled a, a fumble. But it looks like Kentel's at least one of his knees, if not both of his knees, were down. So that ball is probably going to be spotted closer to the 30-yard line and back him up a little Uh but, yeah, Austin P. Uh, Barry, they've struggled a little bit right now, just trying to trying to find themselves offensively. They've shown flashes of brilliance with Kentel Williams, but the passing game has been slow to start, and that's been a kind of a worry with a, a new offensive line. You want to get that passing game to open up the running game as we take a look at this replay again. But you'd have to say Hudspeth has been a little, uh, a little not as happy with his offense as he would have liked going into the third series of this game. Let's see, replay booth continues to take a look. Overall total yards at the 652 mark of the first quarter. Austin P62, 59 for the Eagles. And I tell you, they put a nice drive together to get the points. Officially a 24-yard field goal is what they're saying for Olivo, the young freshman that booted it through a moment ago to give uh, the Eagles their first points of the game. And for Austin P. Kentel Williams off to the great start. Right near eight yards per carry, 31 yards on his four rushes so far. Oatsball does have the interception in the red zone and just a miscommunication with uh, D'Angelo Wilson. As we await our final word from the referee, Brad Carell. Fumbled. The ball will be brought back to the 35. First and 10. Please set the game clock to 655. 655. So everything reset. Ball moved back just shy of Austin Peace 35 yard line. Harley, Wilson, Parker, receivers. Split out three wide. Keenan Barnes on the uh, short side. It's Ahmad Tanner in the backfield with Jeremiah Oates ball. So the Gubs trail. Little dump off screen to Tanner. He'll make one man miss and then get hit. The flag will come out as he got hit as he stepped out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Looks like Austin Parker. And those are those good kind of easy passes that Oates ball can, can get under his belt, get some completions. And Ahmad Tanner. This guy, I feel like he's been here forever, Barry. He's a thousand yard rusher and he can do that After and also the play, in the passing game. Personal foul, late hit defense, number 98, 15 yards and a first down. So Miles Terman, we'll take a look here, Pat. Yeah, and from up here, it looked like it was, it was pretty late as both feet, one, two steps are out of bounds, and then he gets hit. So that's a good call for the refs, and that's more yards on the, the governor's offense that will take him past midfield. So into plus territory, they'll go to the 42 of the Eagles. Cubs go with two in the backfield this time. Three receivers. Tanner with Williams in the uh, back check that that's Prince Mamadou ball bobble and then rifled to Barnes he catches at the 29 down he goes what a pass bobbled for a moment by Oates ball then he throws the fastball and Nichols just able to jump on and bring Barnes down you're not kidding and about the fastball Oates ball had trouble with the snap kind of misjudged it with Tanner 
Oaks ball will just throw it out in the flat to Tanner, try to get the three receivers on that side to block down for him. Not much happening there as Tanner will slip up as he gets to around the 25-yard line. So around a three-yard pickup. Again, this tempo, lightning fast. And, and they're not checking over at the sideline. They're getting and going. Oats ball, play action. He will throw it up. Single coverage, unable to come down with it again. He goes to the big target, Barnes. And again, we see coverage on the play. Nicholson again. Those two have been hooking up in this one. And that's the second straight time Oats Ball's given Keenan Barnes the chance. And that's the second time he's got his hands on it. So Barnes is getting closer and closer to reeling in those contested catches. And that's what J.O. and obviously Hudsmith is going to want is to make some contested catches and some great catches. Nichol Nicholson's given up a lot of size when he gets singled up on Barnes. Keenan Barnes standing at 6'3", Nicholson listed at six foot. So a big third down play. Again, a little play action. Throws into the end zone, wide open. D'Angelo Wilson, a touchdown strike for the Governors. D'Angelo Wilson, again, he's leaving up right where he left off last season just right in the middle of the field, and it's hard to miss him if you're Jeremiah Oatesfall. He was wide open. Some coverage breakdown here as we take a look at the replay. A play action pass, and Oatesfall staring him down the whole way. Just gives him a chance to run under it. Gets two feet in bounds. A huge touchdown for the Governors as they regain the lead. Eight touchdown of Wilson's career. The junior out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. 28 catches a year ago. There was a flag on the play. Number 11 and number one. That is both of their first unsportsmanlike of the game. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So Wilson and Parker celebrating. And that's gonna drive a, a veteran head coach like Hudspeth absolutely berserk. Have a great play and then you set yourself back on the kickoff. I thought the no fun league was playing preseason <laughs> tonight. Well, the, can't celebrate a touchdown apparently anymore. Javon Craig will be the holder and booting the PAT up and in. Logan Birchfield. Long slapper this year's Nick Screenock. So the Govs take a seven to three lead. And that'll send us to a break. Govs in front here on ESPN Plus. Back here at Fort Terra Stadium, we see the celebration after the touchdown. I mean, that's just egregious, Barry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're set to kick off. Cole Phillips will kick it off for Austin P. We will see the explosive Nike Martin. Travion Pratt are back deep. And again, the penalty was assessed on the kickoff, so Phillips will put the toe to it at the 20-yard line to boot. It'll bounce and be caught by one of the up men. Big hit to 42. The Gubs were all over that as Tyler Barnes, one of the wide receivers, the up men on special teams with the uh, – Short return there. That was just catch it and hang on for dear life. <laughs> it didn't look like the prettiest kick in the world, but it gets the job done. And Austin P did a good job covering that kick and about the best result they could have hoped for with a bad position kicking-wise. And again, the Eagles with two returning starters on that offensive line, a young man that was a true freshman a year ago, and he started every game at right tackle. He's been moved to left tackle. Ricky Lee, Jesse Urbina, Robert Mitchell, Andrew Dale, another veteran, and uh, Devin Jordan are the uh, the new guys up front trying to open some holes for their great runner, Isaiah Totten. But so far, it's been tough going. They've been able to move the ball through the air with some short dump off passes, but Totten has been held in check as Whittinghill gets the tackle. And that's all up to the big guys up front. I've specifically seen John Wesley Whiteside doing a good job forcing pressure up front, and Totten's really had trouble moving the ball. 
Handoff here to Totten as he tries to get around oh. and can't. He'll get hit out of bounds near the 45, and that certainly is going to look like a illegal hit out of bounds. Could be Whittinghill. Austin P did a good job covering the the sideline there and getting outside, but it just can't hit the guy late. And if it does end up, it's going to be a first down for the Eagles. After the play, personal foul, late hit, out of bounds, defense, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Okay, so he didn't give the number, but we've had a couple of those now, one on each team. 33. Cameron Miller call for that one. So after the penalty yardage from the Austin P41, Xanders, the starter, through the hands, and then a big hit delivered. Coming across the middle, trying to make the play, the big 6'4 receiver, Tyler Barnes, and he paid for it as Pat Walker up from the middle linebacker position belted him. And that's all on Micah Xanders. He had the time, and he had the receiver wide open. He just kind of threw it over his head and nearly got his receiver's head taken off there with the, with the high throw. So now on a second and 10 from the 41, so far, Totten, three carries, just two yards. He's certainly the marked man, as he will be all year. He'll get a toss way back at the 50 to see if he can get some vision, go down the field. He will not, as he's dropped at the 40-yard uh, line, maybe picking up a yard possibly on this as Trent Taylor comes up and makes the play. Cordell Jackson in on the stop as well. And it doesn't matter if they're trying to go inside or outside. Austin P is just doing a great job getting to the ball, finding the ball, and tackling Totten in the backfield. So third and nine, 0 for 2 on third down of the Eagles. Gubs lead it 7-3, 4-30 to go here in the first quarter of play. The season opener here on this Thursday night. First ever meeting between these two teams. Xander spreads it out. He does have Totten in the backfield. Play clock down to one as he snaps it. Did he get it off in time? And they're going to get a false start. He was hurrying to beat the play clock, which was down to one. False start. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, still third down. Ricky Lee, the left tackle, a little eager. He, could, he knew that clock was running down. He was begging. His quarterback snapped the ball. Let's go. So that backs him up. Five yards, so should be a third and 14, we'll call it, at the 45-yard line. As if it wasn't going to be tough enough at third and nine, third and 14 is going to be near impossible for this Eagles team to convert. Five wide for Micah Sanders. He'll take the drop, then step up. Flag comes out, pass completed, caught the 31 or inside the 30 to the 28. The yardage is there for first down, but there is a flag over near the Austin P sideline. We'll wait and see what the call is here. Illegal formation, offense. Number 75 was lined up in the backfield, creating more than four in the backfield. Devin That's Jordan, the right tackle, red shirt spot. freshman. Replay third down. Transfer from Akron. And a that's a sign call. of a player who, that's his this is his first start of the game, and that's an absolute killer penalty after you convert the tough first down. And now they're going to have to do it again, but even further back. Looks like a third and 19 is what they're showing on the board. Ball looks to be at about the 40, right at midfield. Still waiting to spot it, so they'll spot it just about the 50-yard line on the Gov head. Is 
Xanders will bring back some protection as Totten is in the backfield with him as he'll go with four receivers in this formation. So third and 19 from midfield. Still 0 for 2 on third down are the Eagles. They're coming after him. Xander's going to step up, running for his life, and he'll try to get all he can as he gets to the 45-yard line, and Pat Walker there to finish him off. But talk about pinning your ears back, coming after the quarterback. That's what the Governors did. Yeah, the, the play before, they kind of sat back and let the quarterback go with it. This time they brought the house. Matthew Gale was r coming right after Xander's. It ends up being Pat Walker in the end, but a good – third down stop and Austin Peay's offense will look to score another touchdown here. So Picaro will punt it away. D'Angelo Wilson with the, the uh, touchdown grab earlier and they will punt it away from him. Both these teams have very explosive athletes in their return game and when you have an opportunity to kick it away you will. So, so far, Patton, in this one, we've seen the Eagles able to punch in a field goal early, and we've seen the Govs march back down the field after getting stopped in the red zone. Last time they get a touchdown strike, Oates ball to Wilson. For Austin P, a, a rough start, but they're starting to get their offense under their under their feet. It's all been Kintel Williams to get them going, and then you had Jeremiah Oates ball with a huge touchdown pass to D'Angelo Wilson. But if you're North Carolina Central, you've shown you're not turning the ball over you're not really making that many mistakes other than a few penalties. you got to like where you're at. You just need a stop here to lead the deficit down to just four. Austin P. will come out. 3.02 to go in the first quarter. Season opener tonight here on this Thursday night. So glad you've tuned us in. Kentel Williams continues his big night as he will run out of bounds at the 45 and about a 19-yard pickup on the play. He's ran out by Royster, their outstanding defensive end. And the two offenses couldn't be any more different. For Austin P. Kintel Williams is getting all the space he, space he wants. And for North Carolina Central, Totten is having trouble. Oatesball gets rid of it quickly. Wilson, his favorite target tonight. And he's brought down to 48. Jerome Foster in on the tackle for the Eagles. Bring up second down and six. Out to Williams and Kintel will take a tackler across midfield of the 45. Matt Stevens able to bring him down from the linebacker spot. He's going to be just shy of the first down marker or it looks like they're going to give it to him, but on the second consecutive quick, quick pass for Oatesville, he's getting the ball out quick, not letting the Eagles get to him. So he'll get the first down at the 45 on a good spot. This time, Kentel is stood up right at the line of scrimmage and brought down. Nice job of that Eagles defense. This was a good unit a year ago. Of course, a lot of new faces, but last year they were number one in the MEAC, 14th in the nation, and seven tackles for loss for game per game. And they haven't really been in the backfield yet, but they've been able to get some stops when they've needed to tonight despite the touchdown throw a moment ago. Already they got the big turnover in this game. Handoff inside running to the 40 on second down. So Tanner will take it up for about a six-yard pickup. Khalid Blunt will make the stop. He averages about four and a half yards per carry, and that's really what Tanner's going to give you just about every play. He's not going to get negative yards. He's going to give you that two, three, four, and five nearly every, every run. Third and five. Govs two out of four on third down so far in this first quarter. Oates ball is going to throw, has all day to throw, and it is caught. Putting his foot in the ground and making a man miss is Harley. Harley turns it back up, brought down at the 11-yard line. Big-time catch by Nico Harley, the junior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Justin Nicholson finally able to bring him down. If we take a look at this replay, Oates ball actually throws into double coverage, and Harley shakes both of them. And he puts his foot in the ground and makes a couple moves. And that's an athletic young man. Oates ball. I mean, a quick snap. And he has <laughs> stood up. Deontay Fair will make the play from his rover position to transfer out of Monmouth. They got a penalty. A little 
extracurriculars after the play. Oatswall's leg was nearly behind his head on that <laughs> after the play. You know, the Gubs in the past under Coach Healy played with tempo, but I've never seen anything this fast. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> and it's uh, and it may not affect North Carolina Central right now, but come the second, third, and fourth quarter, these big, these big guys up front are going to want a, a, a little more After breaks the play, than they're getting right now. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number 77. That's his first unsportsmanlike of the game. The down counts. It'll be second down. All right, that's on Kyle Anderton, the red shirt senior. Just so great to have him back after getting injured after four games a year ago. Preseason all OVC as he makes his 17th start tonight to hold down that left tackle position. But that's a big penalty on a veteran. That's about the best recruit they could have asked to come back was Kyle Anderton. So the Gubs will have it. Second and 13, we'll call it Oates ball. Bobble that snap and just tries to get it cleanly and get what he can. That's the second time tonight he's had trouble with the snap. This one, it was a low snap. Tried to make something out of it and probably got one or two helmets to the head. It's going to bring up third down. Third and about 22 as the ball is at the 24-yard line. And that'll bring us to the end of one quarter of play. It's been fast, furious, exciting. Govs are on the march again. They lead 7-3 after one. Back to Fort Terra Stadium after this on ESPN+. Plus. Store today. Back here at Fort Terra Stadium, 7-3. A third and 22, the ball at the 23 of the Eagles. And Oates Ball's going to hand it off straight up the gut. Kentel Williams, and he will get inside the 10. Needed 22, and a, a nice call on it. He almost broke it. Jerome Foster there to stop him. That'll give him a fourth down, but really plus yardage. And we're going to see. Logan Birchfield come out and attempt one from here. And that's where you just kind of are staying conservative, give Kentel the ball, see what he can do with it, and <laughs> nearly got the first down. Picked up about 13 on the place. He continues to have another big night. Birchfield will put it in. It's like about a 27-yarder. We'll double-check the official stat in a moment. But just like that, the Govs able to get points out of it. And they take a 10 to 3 lead as we take a break here on ESPN Plus. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> 14th career field goal for Logan Birchfield as he. Knocks home a 27-yarder. Govs get points. They have a 10-3 lead. And so far through really just a quarter and, and a couple of seconds or so, 185 yards of total offense. Absolutely. Austin P's kind of starting to get their rhythm going now on the offensive end. Now they've had a few penalties on that last drive to set them back. As long as they can clean that up, they can really start to open this game up. And North Carolina Central has got to get its running game going because their passing game is struggling without it. Yeah, actually, you think of the interception down in the red zone. This could be a possibly a 17-3 game. And that was just a miscommunication between Wilson and Oatesball, but they certainly more than made up for it on the touchdown pass that was thrown back in the first quarter. And the kickoff taken at the uh, five by Martin, and they will bring it out. And we'll see the Eagles offense, which they've been able to, to move the football 68 yards, but 57 of those have been through the air as they just could not get their outstanding running back, Isaiah Totten. He's got four carries, just three yards. Yeah, and I watched some film on the Duke game that he played in last year, and you couldn't tell who was on the – for. Who, who was the running back for Duke and who was the running back for North Carolina Central. But right now, 
you got to give credit to the big guys up front for Austin P. They're holding them tight right now. They're not letting them loose. And it's really <laughs> exactly what Coach Hudspeth wanted coming into this one. Both teams certainly wanting to establish the run. They have two great running backs on the field tonight, Kentel Williams and Isaiah Totten. And Totten is just that Mark man tonight. It may be, look, we're not going to let him beat us tonight, maybe what Austin P. is saying. So we're going to see what Xanders can do through the air and what he's been able to hook up with his big receivers. He's been able to move the chains a few times tonight. Something they might want to try is maybe get him in the passing game. He had 105 yards receiving last year. I'd try to get him going that way because on the ground right now, it's just not working as they've got no running backs in the backfield on this one. So Xanders, who battled a shoulder injury, did not play a year ago, got injured back in the 2017 season after starting the first three games. He gets the start tonight. Flag comes out. It was an empty backfield look as he was going to see if he could get down the field with uh, five wide. Ball start. Offense. Number 75. Five-yard penalty. Still Devin second Jordan, down. Devin Jordan at right tackle with a false start. And again, three new starters on that offensive line. And two of those three starters that are new are redshirt freshmen. So this is their first college game. And Ricky Lee is was what uh, the head coach, Trey Oliver, said, the old man of the group, and he's only a sophomore. That shows just how young this line is. And Lee, again, at left tackle, started every game a year ago at right tackle. Try to air it out. Here comes a flag. Trying to hit the intended receiver, Tyler Barnes, and running step for step with him. Is reached out and grabbed to hold him up a bit. The official right on it. I'm not sure he, he needed to even do that. That ball was sailing out of bounds, but a break for the Eagles as Tyler Barnes tries to make a play and he ends up doing it with the pass interference. Pass interference. Defense, number 16, 15 yards from the previous spot and an automatic first down. And again, just three starters return on this Austin P defense. They lost all of their defensive line. Of course, Gunnar Shalato, their team captain, leader at linebacker, graduated number nine career tackler. Davis Cummings, some outstanding secondary players, but that's one of their experienced areas is in that secondary. And the Eagles going to get a gift after the penalty, and they'll come out moving the football as Totten will get a touch, and he gets hit by Jack McDonald. And McDonald is filling that role of Gunnar Shalato at the weak side backers. He comes in also out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Yeah, Pat Walker is going to be the middle linebacker for Austin P. this year. He was more the weak side linebacker, but he's going to have to fill that role of Gunnar Shalato and tackled anything that was in front of him. That's a, some tough shoes to fill. Three-yard pickup. They'll say second and seven. Quick throw, caught, and then hit. Ball comes out. It's loose. Still loose. Who's got it? Officials will come converge on the play as the uh, catch by Chaplin, their big tight end. He got hit by Isaiah Norman. And Ontarius the guns are it. showing the football. Ontarius Bryant says, I've got it. Here's a look. Shocked they're not going to look at this at least. Give uh, the replay booth a chance. Yeah, you would think they would uh, want to. They looked at the one earlier that wasn't as close as this. But here we go. Nevertheless, they spot it and go. First and ten. <laughs> From their own 48, Xanders will throw and right through the hands of Totten. You're right, Pat. They're trying to get him involved. If they can't get him running, they're trying to see if they can get him out in space in, in the passing game. And it's just not working for him. And if that's not going to work for him, they're just going to have to keep relying on this passing game where they've been able to move the ball somewhat. Xanders has done a good job not forcing things, not providing uh, turnovers for this awesome P team to thrive on. He's just really managing this game, and that's what – his head coach, Trey Oliver, wanted from him coming into it. Second and 10. A keeper this time and pulled down in the backfield. Great tackle. Great job by Cordell Jackson. Outstanding play. Came right from behind him, and Xander thought he had at least the first down, and unfortunately he's dropped in the backfield. Cordell really showing his speed on that play. So another third down, and that is spelled doom tonight for these Eagles. They're 0 for 3. Have yet to move the sticks on third down. They're looking at third and 13. The ball backed up at their own 44. They'll go with four wide receivers. Xanders. 
and somehow completed that in all that traffic, but for a minimal gain, will get it up to the 41. It looks like uh, the catch is made by Jordan Freeman. We see the red shirt junior, and as soon as he made the catch, Kwame Sutton had him wrapped up in a bear hug. Down he goes, and 0 for 4 now on third down of the Eagles, and Picaro will come in to punt it away. Yeah, the Eagles tried to do a little screen pass there, but Austin P read that one all the way, and they get another stop and another chance to score here. Wilson is back deep. Oh, low snap. Fumbled by Percaro. He picked it up in a hurry and got a good kickoff. Fair catch called for. Wilson takes it at the 21, and we'll see this explosive Austin P offense come out. And we'll head to a break. 10 to 3. Austin P leading North Carolina Central here at Fort Terra Stadium. Back after this, you're watching ESPN Plus. American Idol? I mean, <laughs> all right, stand by. Of Life Point Church and Pastor George. Pastor Mike, you're also the chaplain for the team, and this is your third year. Can you tell me the difference you have seen in each team and this year? Yeah, sure. It's been a great uh, three years now. This is my third year working with the guys, and I love watching them grow as men. I always tell the team, I said, your other coaches are going to help you get stronger, execute plays learn the playbook my job is to help grow you as men men of character men of integrity men of honor and just watching that growth in them over the last two seasons now this being the third season it's been great it's been great to watch them these are great men you know them off the field and we're getting a chance to see them on the field what are they like off the field well they're fun uh, they like to joke and have fun and sing uh, it's funny to watch them in the locker room lip syncing songs and singing along and hyping each other up a lot of them come to our church or go to other churches in town and the coaching staff as well. But they're always incredibly respectful, honorable men, and just eager to grow. It's great. Now, we're only a quarter and a half, but tell me what do you think the season's going to look like for the Govs? Well, it's been a great two seasons so far. Uh, and then I'm, I'm really thinking this season they've got a lot higher level of discipline and expectation. So I, I have no doubt they'll have a winning season for sure. But, you know, the Bible says don't try to predict the future. So we'll just put that in God's hands. All right, thank you. And Pastor Jordan, can you tell us about the exciting news coming to Austin P campus? Yeah, so we're going to be launching a campus on uh, in the Clement Building on September 8th. Our services will be at 6 o'clock. And, uh, you know, they actually say that between 60 to 70 percent of college students walk away from their faith with their first year on a college campus. And so we're believing that that's going to change. And we're believing uh, to create a place where people can find community and uh, where believers can get discipled and grow in their faith and where uh, lost people can come to know God. So. Great. All right, can you tell us what the times of the service will be? Yeah, 6 p.m. Sunday night, starting September 8th in the Clement Auditorium. All right, thank you, guys. Back to you, Barry. All right, thanks, Bree. We appreciate that report. We'll hopefully she'll get a chance to visit with Coach Hudspeth coming up here at the half. 10 to 3, we're looking at third down and about 6 from the 25-yard line, Oates ball will throw, and Harley, tough catch. Oh, picked off. Harley had to lean in and try to grab it, and it was picked off. Marcus Martin with a big-time interception, the junior out of Miami, Florida. That's the second pick tonight by Oates ball. Take a look at this replay. Harley looks like he just kind of sat in there, and Oates ball led him and slipped right out of his hands, and that one's picked off. The second turnover of the night for Austin P. The second pick for Oatesville, a struggle somewhat for Oatesville, but a lot of the times this has just been unlucky on his part, miscommunication, and that one slips out of the hands of Harley. Yeah, it's been a couple of short pass plays, one where Wilson stopped the route and he threw the pick back in the first quarter, and this one right through the hands of Harley. The pass was not on target, and he bobbled it, kind of batted it up right into the arms of Marcus Martin. So uh, opportunistic defense is what the Eagles are known for again, they were number one in their conference a year ago, a plus six on turnover margins. And they are right back in business here, despite 75 yards of offense. At 10 to three, they're knocking on the door after the interception. This is going to be the biggest test for this Austin P defense to kind of bail out their offense. It looks like we're going to get a timeout from North Carolina Central. North Carolina Central, that's their first of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Eagles will take their first. We'll keep it right here for this one. And 
they didn't have their personnel right heading into that play, and this is a big series for this team. Again, they're going to get the kickoff to start the second <laughs> half, but they've they've got to cash in here with this huge interception. And it's always better to kind of burn a timeout that you don't really want to take other than do a five-yard penalty for a, an illegal formation or a jumping off sides. So this is a big point in the game for North Carolina Central. If they can get even a field goal out of this, they would put it at a four-point deficit going into the half. A huge possession for both teams. This could be a big part of the a big part of the game here. All right, so out of the timeout, Coach Trey Oliver's brought his team over. Twin receivers to each side. Totten in the backfield. Rolling out is Xanders. He'll throw. It's caught at the 31. Minimal gain on the catch by McDaniel. And he's brought down by Mason Harwell, who makes the play. One of the new starters up front. Played just a couple of games a year ago. Harwell out of Memphis. And now we'll see a second down. Looks like they'll give him maybe two. Ball spot is the 32nd and 8. We tick down here near the uh, nine-minute mark. 10 to 3, Austin P with the lead on the Eagles. Xanders gets rid of it right before he's popped, and the ball knocked up in the air and almost caught on the carom. Unable to completely bring it down was Ryan McDaniel, and that was dangerous. Isaiah Norman in on there to break up the play, the redshirt sophomore out of Memphis. This is going to be a fun replay to look at. Xanders put it, puts it right where it needs to be, and the receiver just can't haul it in. That was Ryan McDaniels, and he really needs to find that ball. Might have got caught in the lights right there. That's a dangerous pass. That one could have been picked off or a touchdown pass for the Eagles. A big-time breakup for the Governors. Third and nine, 0 for 4 on third down of the Eagles. They need a conversion here. As, again, they have a brand-new freshman kicker. Xander's just going to try to get something. Pumps it, throws, and that one nearly picked off. Jackson had a better chance at that play, and let's see. We're hearing the whistles blow as Anders was uh, knocked down right at the sticks on this uh, Eagle sideline. Do see a flag now out on the field. John Wesley Whiteside. And I tell you what, Sanders got lit up on that play by a few governors, and that's why Trey Oliver doesn't want his quarterbacks uh, on the move, especially with the injury history that this quarterback has and Sanders and also Caldwell that we might see later on in this one. Whiteside applying some pressure. One of the uh, new starters, transfer out of Citadel, was the Georgia High School Defensive Player of the Year back in 2015. And we await Brad Carell on this flag. It's right at the line of scrimmage, so my guess would probably be some sort of holding or illegal hands to the face. Here comes the call. Personal foul, offense, hands to the face, number 50, 15-yard 15 penalty, still third down. So they're going to get the right guard, the veteran Andrew Dale, the leader on that offensive group. Second team preseason all MEAC. That's a big penalty. I like this play here from Coach Hudspeth taking the penalty trusting his defense that they can get a stop here and kind of put them out of any field goal range that they were in early. Got to get to the 20-yard line. The ball spotted back at the 45, third down. And a long way to go for Xanders. They come after him. He gets hit, throws, incomplete, big stop for the Gubs defensively. Josephus Smith in. He had to throw it way before he wanted to, and it'll bring up fourth down. How big is that penalty as the Eagles bogged down, unable to get points after a huge turnover? When it knocks them right out of field goal range, and even if they weren't, wouldn't have kicked the field goal before the penalty, they might have gone for it. They're in that kind of uncomfortable sort of range here, but instead, Austin P. they're going to stop them without any points, and they're going to have a chance once again to kind of up their lead once again. So Picaro will punt again. 
D'Angelo Wilson stands at his own 10. We'll see if they let him touch it. They didn't a moment ago. And fair catch call for and made at the 11 by Wilson. With 8.50 to go, 10 to 3, Austin P with the lead. And that'll lead us to a break. Back after this, you're watching ESPN+. Plus. Yeah. Are you ready for Monday night? Welcome back. Opening night of college football here at Fort Terra Stadium. The first of six big home games for the Governors this year. Inside handoff. Beautiful cut. Kentel Williams, his big night continues as he takes it to the 25-yard line. Tripped up by Nicholson. Take a look at this replay. I don't know if there's much room at all. Actually, that's a huge hole for Kentel. Kyle Anderson creating that one. He just has the North Carolina crystal falling all over. And he breaks this one. Oats ball out, lead blocking, running right down the sideline. Kentel, and he's pushed out of bounds on that governor's sideline. He took a play that looked like really nothing there and able to burst it outside the numbers and head right down the sideline. That's why this team loves its quarterback. Look at Oatsball. He's just going to kind of start putting, realizing he's going to be the lead blocker. That's a huge carry for Kentel. So a quick snap might be too quick this time. The Govs, as soon as they spot the ball, they are snapping it tonight, and Kentel Williams keeps piling up the yard. It's 39-yard run. He's over 100 yards with 117. That's kind of what happens when you've got your offensive linemen sprinting up there. They're going to kind of get a little antsy, and you're going to have penalties like that, but it's working for them, so they're going to just continue on with this pace, and why not? So back him up to the 40. It's been all Kentel Williams, and why not on this series? And he will toss it back. Harley used to be a quarterback. He'll throw this one to Wilson. D'Angelo catches it for the touchdown. That sure did look like an ex-quarterback to me, Barry. Fireworks go off, and we're seeing fireworks on the field with this offense. Wilson, second touchdown grab. Here's a good look at it, Patton. Originally, it's handed off to Kintel, and he just tosses it up for Harley, and he finds Angelo Wilson wide open, and he fools the Eagles all the way. That's a momentum play right there for Austin P as they lead this one 16-3. The left-hander, former quarterback, converted to wide receiver. Shows off the arm there is Wilson. All he had to do was come down with it. Second touchdown grab and the PAT good by Birchfield. So the Govs strike quickly, 17 to three. They've had a couple of turnovers tonight which have kept them from probably putting more points on the board as they've had uh, the one definitely in the red zone, but just a great play call. And this one you're gonna put up in the locker room, uh, I think all week, that play worked to perfection. And that's about as good of a result you could ask from that play. And Austin P really starting to have their offense churning, barring these kind of weird in, weird interceptions by Oatesville. And we might see a, a quarterback change here, Bear, where we saw the backup quarterback from North Carolina Central kind of starting to warm up in Chauncey Caldwell. Being interested to see if he comes in to just give anything a, a little spark for the Eagles because they're starting to fall behind the pace. Yeah, we thought we would see him, and we thought we would see him in the first half if the Eagles got down by a couple of scores. You see Coach Mark Hudspeth, his team playing with tempo, with pace, with passion tonight. You won't see a finer offensive play than that a moment ago. On the 40-yard strike, Benico Harley, the touchdown pass to D'Angelo Wilson, his second TD grab of the night. Now nine career touchdown catches for the former Purple from Bowling Green High School. State champion in Kentucky, and he has just been electric last year, and now he is the main man at receiver this year. And he kind of came out of nowhere last year, and all teams are going to know about him now, and he's really showing his worth in this first game, and he's looking to continue it. 
Phillips puts it in the air, and it's taken by Martin at the eight. Martin brought down at the 21-yard line, and he's still running. <laughs> what do we have here? Martin takes it the length of the field. Everybody stopped, including yours truly, and he kept running. Can't recall if I heard a whistle. They're saying a touchdown. Take a look at this replay to see if anything was down, and he's def. I think at least maybe his uh, forearms were down there. Maybe his knees weren't, but that's as good as a knee. So I think this is this one's going to come back. Yeah, as the replay booth is right next to us, they're they're getting busy looking at it. The ruling on the field was the runner was down at the 22-yard line. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he went down to keep his knees from touching both, look like both elbows. We'll get a better look at it here. Kind of tripped up at the 20-yard line. And, yeah, it, it, I think even a knee hit. So, yeah, he fooled us. He fooled uh, everyone in the crowd but didn't end up fooling the refs. Yeah, normally when you have 11 guys in red stop, they saw that he was down. But the Eagles have been explosive in their return game. 20 returns for touchdowns in the last seven years. They have been explosive on special teams. And it does look like we're going to get our first look at the back backup quarterback, Chauncey Caldwell. An early change just to try to get something going for the Eagles. Could this be it? So Caldwell comes in, ankle injury, sidelined him, a former two-star athlete. And flag will come in on this play. as that was the backup running back, Jordan Freeman, who didn't play a year ago as well. So he's new to the team. McDonald in on the uh, tackle for Austin P. And we'll await to see who this flag is on. There is no foul in play. Looked like it possibly could have been a holding penalty there, but they end up just picking it up. So that'll be second down and 10, but the governors are just flying to the football right now. It doesn't matter who the running back is. So Caldwell, his first series, he will throw one singled up is Pratt. Good coverage that time on an overthrown ball as Erskine Francis, who's been busy tonight. You will get tested against this uh, Eagle team as they're uh, New offensive coordinator Moses Ware loves to throw first, spread it around. He's got a great back, but they can't seem to get the back going tonight, so they're going to be throwing it a lot. And this is something the DBs haven't really faced is these tall wide receivers, and they've really dealt with it pretty successfully so far in this one. 0 for 5 on third down are the Eagles. Caldwell, he can do this, step up and run, trying to get to the sticks. Francis in on the tackle. And Caldwell doing it with his legs. And it'll bring up fourth down as he's uh, short of the marker. 12 career starts for Caldwell. Thrown 18 touchdowns, just four picks. Eight career rushing TDs for the junior. Ankle injury. Sidelined him a year ago when he was off to a great start and he missed really the spring session, and Xander's uh, pulled ahead as the starter. Fair catch call for, another punt by Picaro, and Wilson takes it at the 36. And that's where we'll see the Gov offense come back out. Two touchdown leads, 646 to go before we get to the half. I guess, Patton, if you're trying to grade the team so far, not a complete A because they've had the turnovers, but you've got to be impressed with what they're doing offensively because Kentel Williams has been able to do whatever he wants to do. And when Oates Falls gone to the air, despite the two picks, they've been able to uh, move the sticks. Like you said, other than those two picks, not a perfect game from Austin P, but it's about as good of a performance you could ask. Wait, at least from Kentel Williams, he's shown that he's not uh, he's not going to be stopping that eight yards per carry that he averaged last season. And he's going to really excel at that right now as Austin P looks to maybe close this first half in style. Gov averaged, uh, the Govs averaged 419 yards per game a year ago as they set six different records offensively. Montana with the carry here. And 
He's brought down by Shamar Baker, who had the interception earlier in this game. But already tonight, adding on to that, they're approaching 300 yards of offense in this first half. They'll go back to Tanner, and Tanner is going to carry some tacklers up near the first down marker. As Cyrus stand back, defensive lineman will make the tackle. Rotating a lot of guys up front with this tempo, you're going to see that defense try to get as many fresh bodies as possible. And I think for me, the biggest question mark coming into this season for Austin P was going to be that offensive line. And I don't know if you could ask for a better game for those guys up front. If anything, this is just going to add some confidence for them, show that they can do it. Because this is a North Carolina Central team that's shown it, it can stop the run to, to some degree. And they haven't been able to do that tonight at all, really. So once again, the officials huddle up. And we'll hear once again from the star of the show tonight, Brad Carell. <laughs> The ruling on the field is that we were one yard short of the line of the game. Still third down. So short of the line to gain. The chain gang had moved. So third down and one to go. Ball at the 45 of Austin P. Look to give it to Tanner here again. He's shown he can get the yards at will. Austin Pete, three for seven tonight, converting on third down. 286 yards of total offense as we hit the six-minute mark here in the second quarter. And again to Tanner, you call it. Just breaks through arm tackles. First down and more to the 45 of the Eagles. And finally, Royster able to corral him. He's running hard tonight. What's well, a different kind of back to Kentel Williams? Kentel's more of a shake you out of your shoes, but Kentel's going to run right over you, and, you're, and if you're not ready, like we just saw, he'll do exactly that. It's Prince Mamadou's going to check in for Austin P. Yeah, that third back's pretty good, too, and Mamadou, six foot 205, Oatesfall's going to throw. It's got single coverage with Barnes, and that one knocked away. Nice coverage that time, and again, Nicholson, he's had that tough assignment tonight, giving up a lot of size to uh, Keenan Barnes, the transfer from Louisiana Lafayette. Barnes at 6'3", again Nicholson at six foot, but he's been singled up on him multiple times tonight. That's been a fun uh, matchup to watch tonight, and Nicholson hasn't given up an inch really, and Barnes has got the height advantage as you mentioned, but he just hasn't been able to get his hand on the ball and really reel it in per se. So the Govs take a strike down the field. They've got Inspector Gadget in as Jay Parker, number one. He'll get some touches when he's on the field. He catches, finally hit Brock down at the 38. This guy is explosive. And he's one of those guys that the entire the entire crowd here at Fort Terra Stadium, they kind of stand up whenever he has the ball because he can take something into an 80-yard touchdown pass. Great young player out of Pearl Cone High School in Nashville. Third and short. Looks like third and about two, maybe three on the spot after the game of seven, so third and three, we'll call it. 38 of the Eagles. Cubs have all of their timeouts. They lead 17-3 here in the second quarter. Oates fall to throw and a completion. D'Angelo Wilson, another catch. I thought for a moment all he did was catch touchdowns, but he makes the <laughs> catch there and Steven Stokes runs him out of bounds. That's a professional throw and catch for Oates fall and Wilson. You can already see the relationship they built last year is already translating to this year. Thought they might have given it to Mamadou, but Wilson gets the first down. The Govs convert, pop fake, and the throw, and threw it right over the defender, and it's caught, and there he is. The man putting on a show tonight, D'Angelo Wilson, as he catches another touchdown. What a throw by Oatesfall. As we take a look at this replay, Oatesfall throws this one about as perfect as he could here. The defensive back here thinks he's got an easy interception. It floats right over his head, and Wilson does what he does best, gets it for six. 29-yard touchdown pass. Wilson catches another one. What a night he is having. And Birchfield is perfect, 24-3. 
as the Govs continue to dazzle through the air and on the ground tonight as they're carving up this Eagles defense and trying to get the season off to the right start. First of six home games, trying to protect the Ford here tonight. So far, so good. I got to say, D'Angelo Wilson and Kentel Williams are battling out for the game ball right now. Both of them are <laughs> off to a red hot, red hot pace here in the first game. And give it up to Oatesvall. He had some struggles early on through. He's thrown two picks today. But he's really made the tough throws look somewhat easy in, in some case. But D'Angelo Wilson, what a night he's having. He's going right where he left off last season. And that's positive signs for this governor's offense. Yep, third touchdown catch of the night. Ten now on his career. He was so good a year ago of running after the catch, 17 yards per reception. And early on, he was kind of the gadget guy. You would see him in a lot of receiver sweeps, get him some looks, end arounds. Uh, then they found out how good he could catch the football and a great return man, but he's just running open tonight. If you get the ball to him, he's been wide open. And right now he's making all his money really in the slot. He's been in the slot most of the night, kind of working against some of these safeties, and they're going to have to put some corners on him pretty quick or else he's going to – have a five touchdown night before you before before you know it. Seven play, 64 yard drive took two minutes 35 seconds for Oatesball to strike with D'Angelo Wilson. J.O. Jeremiah Oatesball's second TD of the night, and again he had a huge year a year ago. 26 touchdowns, 20 through the air, six on the ground, and it'll be taken by Nike Martin. And. Another great job tonight by Austin P on special teams as well as they are firing on all cylinders, all three phases tonight, playing really well. Absolutely, and and no uh, no form better than, than special teams. If you can get that going, really all the other elements can start to click. And when you're not really giving up those turnovers on special teams or big plays on special teams, that's a sign of a, a great football team. And that's what Austin P wants to be. They want to make it to the OVC championship. And they're showing right now they've got some talent to do it. It's a busy night in college football, busy night in the OVC. We'll look at the scores coming up at the half. And again, that familiar name at the top of the preseason poll, Jacksonville State. We'll take a look at the preseason predictions for this year. Tell you where the Govs are picked. As the Eagles will keep it on the ground, we tick down under four minutes. As we saw Micah Zanders get the start tonight, the redshirt senior. And now for the second series, it's Chauncey Caldwell, the junior from right there in Durham. Now you almost become one dimensional, still at 24 to three late in this half. You're gonna get the ball first, the Eagles will to start the second half. Just haven't had a lot of time to develop things in the passing game. It's been the short passing game and the run after catch where they've been able to move it down the field a few times tonight. There's a beautiful cutback run. And uh, as Totten will get a carry there. Thought he had some daylight and then one Terrius Bryant up for the stop. Absolutely, and that's one Terrius Bryant has one of the best stories really in college football. Ended up being a walk-on here at Austin P. And during his early years, he would, in camp, he would commute from Nashville to Clarksville. And right now he's on full scholarship, and he's showing exactly why on that play. Play action, Caldwell to throw. It's caught and then belted right at the 20 is the catch made by Ryan McDaniel. Juan Terrius Bryant in on the stop. What a player is Bryant, the former walk-on as he makes his 17th start. He's the leading returning tackler on this team and really the leader of the defense. Absolutely, and he's the face of that defense, especially after Jason Williams had transferred elsewhere. Being at media day, he was he's really gonna be the face and the leader of this defense and where this Austin P defense goes, he will go with them. John Picaro's had a busy night punting the senior D'Angelo Wilson's had to call a lot of fair catches on punts tonight. Hasn't been able to really get a return. And this one kicked away from him and out of bounds right near midfield. And if you're Trey Oliver, the head coach at uh, NCCU, you're thinking, oh, man, we got the ball back to these guys. Can we at least pick up a first down? Because the Govs have been striking quickly tonight. 
Already 24 points on the board, 341 yards of offense, and they've got 201 to work with. And I believe they still have all of their timeouts. So Austin P trying to get more. And the offense from North Carolina Central is really leaving this defense out to dry. They've only had five first downs all day tonight. So really leaving this defense out on the field against a fast-paced offense, that's a recipe for disaster. Just 89 yards of uh, total offense for the Eagles, only 17 on the ground so far. Williams and Mamadou are the backs with Oats Ball. And Oats Ball will keep it this time. And he'll take it across midfield. Nice gain on first down. Beautiful read that time by Oats Ball as Parker will get the, top, the stop. And Oats Ball doesn't take that many big hits, so Hudspeth allows him to use his legs. They come after him, jailbreak. He sets it up beautifully to Kentel Williams, trying to get that lead block, but it never materialized. And still a good game. And a first down for Austin P. Justin Nicholson there to make the stop from the secondary. Oatsfold did a great job there. He had two or three defenders in his face and threw a pass off his back foot, and Kentel reels it in, and they get another first down, something we've said a lot tonight, Kentel Williams. Williams already 117 yards rushing. Longest run is uh, 39. He's averaging 13 yards per carry. Beautiful cutback. A little delay, and then takes it to the 30. Deontay Fair with the tackle for the Eagles. And right now, this looks like a gas defensive line from North Carolina Central. A lot of looking at, his, at their coaches in distress. Yeah, not even getting lined up that time. And the catch by Williams. Talk about a workhorse, he's doing it tonight. And Austin Parker to get the tackle there. But you see it when you start seeing those hands on the hips while the big guys up front, <laughs> they are winded. I've got my hands on my hips, and I'm, I'm not even in there right now at the pace Austin P's going at. The thing is, the offensive linemen don't look that gassed either. They look fairly conditioned. So this is something Hudspeth has wanted to do all offseason. He's doing it in game one. That's what Coach Hudspeth had said earlier this week right after practice. We want to try to wear this team down. We're going to come at them and keep coming with just this frenetic pace. Huge hole for Tanner. Ahmad will take it to the 15-yard line. Still plenty of time. 108 clock stop as uh, the Gums will take a timeout. Quick 30-second timeout as we keep it right here. Gubbs will still have two to work with. Is the ball at the 15? Looks like it's going to be a second and about three as they try to get more. And this running game continues to impress. And it's I know we've saying Kentel Williams praises all night, but it's not only been him. Tanner's got 30 for himself, and oatsville has got 30 as well. So although Kentel's got the bulk of it, other players are kind of behind him con contributing to this offense. And... That's exactly how you want it, running by committee. Austin P's offense set six different records a year ago. Points per game, almost 31 points per game to set the uh, team record. They're at 24 now as they knock on the door here with 108 to go. Second and three, ball at the 15 of the Eagles. And we'll see what the Austin P offense will do here with Oates Ball. And this time, Lucky wasn't picked off. The receiver broke the route off. And here's a flag coming out after the play. Clapping his hands for Austin P. Is Seth Johnson. So this could be on the Eagles. We anticipate it. That's the case. Even though that wasn't picked off, that's another miscommunication between Oatsfall and Wilson. Something they're going to want to get cleaned up later on in this game and moving forward in the season. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense, number 91. That penalty's half the distance to the goal. Automatic. That's on First down. Malit, the redshirt sophomore, the transfer from NC State. Brand new starter at defensive end. 
it's got to be frustrating on that defensive front. We talked about they're starting to get gassed, and that was a uh, critical mistake there on that play to give the Govs the first down after. You're right, that could have been danger. Miscommunication again. That led to a uh, interception way back in the first quarter for Austin P. Handed here to Parker. He cuts back. Oh, he gets popped. <laughs> Parker, little guy at 5'5", five, five, and if you can square him up, man, you can <laughs> rattle his feelings, I tell you. <laughs> Absolutely on that one. Holds on to the ball. Lucky enough for him, but I don't know if he, he wants to take too many more of those tonight. Second and goal from the six. Oates Falls going to step up. The rush comes after him, and they will collapse the pocket. Nowhere to step up. And he'll get to the nine and the Govs again with two timeouts. So they're going to try to stop the clock with 34 seconds to go. Oatesville tried to sidestep the pass rusher on that one and kind of sidestep into another one. It was Arthur Randall really blowing that play up for the Eagles. Looks like the ball now will be spotted at the eight. So second and goal from the eight yard line, 34 seconds to go and one timeout left. We're going to see how aggressive Austin P and Coach Hudspeth wants to be here. Although you could easily just hand it off to Kentel and he could get the eight yards with ease. But whether they go through the air again or just be conservative to get a field goal going into the half, it's be a good kind of benchmark on how Coach Hudspeth wants to be throughout the season, how aggressive he wants to be, how much he trusts his offense. So festive atmosphere tonight on this Thursday night. Austin P. they have uh, played well here at home, and they've continued to set attendance records each year since this stadium was renovated, renovated back in 2014. And the Govs have won eight of their last ten home games. They'll be here five more times, including next week, right back at it at home as uh, Central Arkansas will come in, a team that's playing in Bowling Green tonight against Western Kentucky. So here we go, out of the uh, timeout. Oates ball has Kentel Williams. Barnes has been another big target for him. Wilson in the slot. He's Mr. Touchdown tonight. They're going to throw it up to Barnes. Barnes on the jump ball, pulls it down, and touchdown. Oh, what a weapon. Barnes, we've seen him singled up multiple times tonight, and they've thrown that jump ball to him that time. Both hands, and he pulled it down. Third time's the charm for Barnes. Kind of sizes up Nicholson, the corner here, and Oswald just gives him a chance, see what he can do with it, and just jumps right over him, see his feet, one and two. So if he's in the NFL, that's a good touchdown, but a huge play and a, an aggressive play call and trusting his wide receiver is Oatesville, and it pays off for him. Yeah, those two have been locked up tonight. Again, Barnes, the much bigger players, got three inches of height and just the bulkier player. What a great weapon to have. You go to the corner of the end zone for a jump ball and let a Keenan Barnes pull it down. Nine career touchdowns at Louisiana Lafayette. And he gets his first here at Austin P. Birchfield, another busy night. 31 points in the first half as the Govs lead it 31-3. The only scorer that lone field goal back very early in this ball game, the young freshman for the Eagles, Adrian Olivo, and that's been pretty much about it. Despite a couple of turnovers, is the only time the Eagles have been able to stop Austin Peay. Yeah, when they got that interception and then field goal in the first quarter, that seems like such a long time ago as we get another look at this just incredible catch. Gets two feet in bounds, and – that's going to be a weapon Austin P is going to exploit all year because there's not many corners that are maybe not as tall as Keenan Barnes, but just as thick and as big as he is. He can go up and get the ball and make coverage catches. That young fan lo is loving it. As, <laughs> as Barnes preseason all Sunbelt Conference back in 2017, three-star athlete out of Madison, Mississippi. And again, he played at Louisiana Lafayette. Mark Hudspeth, of course, was the former head coach there. Barnes, one of those grad transfers coming in and already a major weapon in this offense. And great balance tonight for Austin P. 207 yards through the air, 182 yards on the ground. 
I guess one of the areas that Coach won't be pleased with at the half, Coach Hutzpit, that is, the six penalties, eight penalties on the Eagles. And really without a preseason game, you come into week one, you never know what you're going to get penalty-wise. And that was something he was kind of worried about was – he mentioned to you, Barry, how he watched that Florida-Miami game and saw just how sloppy it was and was worried how his team is. There's been some sloppiness, but for the most part, it's been pretty clean. It'll be taken by the up man for the Eagles on a bouncing kick. 23 seconds remains on the clock. Two timeouts for the Eagles to work with. So if they decide to come out and try to to strike they can stop the clock again they will get the kickoff to start the second half they won the toss they deferred so we'll see uh, how coach Trey Oliver decides to go with it his offensive coordinator Moses Ware also an alum of North Carolina Central so last year for the Eagles they went five and six identical record to Austin P they went three and four in the MEAC and that was their first losing season since 2013 and they have seven big road games this year. Their first of three tonight on the road. It's their longest road trip to start a season since 1996. And the ball on the ground here as they look to be content, content to run out the clock here in this first half and see what they can do in the locker room. Just as we say that, they're going to take the timeout. So that was an eight-yard gain on the play. I don't really mind this from head coach Trey Oliver. Even if you don't get any points out of it, if I'm him, I have to get some sort of rhythm out of this offense because they're going to need it very quickly when they get the ball coming out of the second half. So even if they don't get points here, maybe just get some completions, get some confidence back into this team because this offense has little to none right now. That was Xanders, who's back in at quarterback. Started the game tonight. We saw Chauncey Caldwell, the junior, come in on a couple of series. So they go back to the starter, Xanders. Totten, who's been held in check. Number 15 all-time at North Carolina Central. Rushing, preseason all-conference player. And he has been quiet so far tonight with just four yards on six carries. Second and two after the timeout. Eagles have one more timeout to work with, 17 seconds to go. Sanders will rifle one out, trying to hit the intended receiver. Barnes throws it at his feet, so the clock will stop, and it'll bring up third down. That's one of the disadvantages of kind of interchanging quarterbacks. Don't really let him have a rhythm after Sanders has been out for a few series. He's come in cold and can't get the completion on second down. 0 for 7 on third down tonight, third and two here. Keep it on the ground. Totten able to spin out of a tackle. And he's going to try to get to the sticks. He'll get the first down. He'll get out of bounds, stop the clock as he gets to about the 48 of Austin P with five seconds to go. So the first third down conversion for North Carolina Central tonight. Just wonder if Coach Oliver... Really with Chauncey Caldwell, really no rhythm there at all if he is going to go back with Xanders and just ride him the rest of the way tonight. Has it here. This should be the final play. This first half brought down on a sack to end the first half, so the defense will rise up. Mason Harwell, new starter at left defensive tackle. He comes through with the sack to wrap up the first half, and as much as we bragged on this, Offense, how about this defense giving up only three points? Absolutely, and they've got to be a big part of why they're leading this game right now. They've shut the specifically the running game out, and that's why they're up huge right now, 28 points. 389 yards of offense for Austin P. As they have a 31-3 lead here at the break. Let's send it down to the field now to Bree Houston. Coach Hud, you guys had a few tricks up your sleeve on offense. Can you tell me what you saw during the first half? Well, uh, in the first in the first quarter, I saw a, a team that missed a lot of opportunities to have more points on the board. Shot ourselves in the foot in the red zone with a turnover. Then we came back and shot ourselves in the foot with a penalty that backed us up. 
and lost a chance to score again. So once we settled down and got those first game jitters out of the way, I thought we came back, executed much better, but we still got to be much cleaner. Defensively, I think we're playing well, and offensively, we're getting into a little bit of a rhythm, uh, but we still got a lot of football left to play. We've got to come out and be cleaner in the second half. You guys do have a lot of football to play coming into the second half. How do you guys keep the momentum? Well, one, that's everybody doing their job. And if we can do our job, we can continue to make plays. And we can't give those guys any momentum because uh, they've got some talented players over there. So we've got to make some adjustments here at halftime, come out in the second half, play really sound, and we've got to take care of the football. All right, thank you, Coach, and good luck. Yeah, thank you. All right, Bree, thanks a lot. Great visit with Coach Hudsmith. In fact, we're going to head to break, and when we come back, Bree Houston's going to – Visit with Coach Hutzman. She visited with him earlier when he got the job, and we're going to have a little bit of that interview, get to know him a little bit better. We're also going to check the preseason polls in both of these conferences, the OVC and the MEAC, and we'll check a busy scoreboard on this big night of football tonight here on this Thursday night. Let's head to halftime, 31-3. to Austin P leads North Carolina Central. Halftime coming up here on ESPN+. Plus. After that. All Austin P in this first half tonight as they lead North Carolina Central 31 to 3 here at Portera Stadium. Well, it's the opening night of college football for many teams around the country, and already we've had all the media days, the preseason predictions. Let's see where both of these teams were picked. The MEACs predicted order of finish, and um, we see North Carolina AT is the team to beat this year as North Carolina Central coming in this uh, season. They're picked uh, fifth. They did get one first-place vote, but uh, North Carolina Central, who finished at middle of the pack a year ago, went three and four in the conference with the new head coach. But there's some good teams at the top, and North Carolina A&T has really been a solid club for the last several seasons, a great defense. So we'll see and we'll wish Coach Oliver the best of luck this year in conference play. And, We'll switch over to the OVC and Patton, some familiar names at the top. Absolutely, Jacksonville State predicted to finish first this season. The past couple years, they have they haven't really been beaten in OVC play, but SEMO really took the t took the first loss to them. And sometimes that's, it, it's really mental. So once that team loses, you're feeling this team can be beaten, we can beat them. And we can see maybe Jacksonville State loses a couple they really shouldn't. Austin P. they're kind of they're ranked fourth right now in the OVC. And really, preseason polls don't mean a whole lot for the coaches, but for us nerds up here in the booth, they mean a little <laughs> bit. So we'll see where Austin P. can finish. A lot of hype, and that's really just going to build on what they're doing right now on the field. And the Govs will host Jacksonville State and Southeast Missouri here at Forterra Stadium. We'll take a break. We'll come back and look at the scoreboard tonight in OVC play after this on ESPN+. Plus. He's painfully shy. He was so quiet. He was not ready for this cruel world. Halftime at Forterra Stadium, Austin P leading 31 to three. Seven big games tonight in the Ohio Valley Conference. Let's take a look at the scoreboard and see what's going on elsewhere tonight. Murray State rolling over Pikeville, 52 to 20. Eastern Illinois trailing Chattanooga, 24-10. Eastern Kentucky big on Valpo, 52-7. Big battle between Southern Illinois, Southeast Missouri, a border battle, and these Red Hawks are for real. 37-14, they lead it. 21-20, UT Martin in a tight one up by one over Northwestern State and Jacksonville State trailing Southeastern Louisiana 21-7 on the OVC scoreboard tonight. The Govs lead this one 31-3 and let's head to a break. We'll come back for the start of the second half after you watch this on ESPN+. Plus. Do something.org. Let's do this.
Big night for the home team. Austin P. rolling 31 to three. After one half of play, D'Angelo Wilson having the big night as he's caught three touchdown passes. Keenan Barnes has a touchdown catch for Austin P. And they've also kicked the field goal tonight. You see some of the numbers in the first half totally dominated by Austin P. Absolutely, 207 yards passing and 182 rushing. And that's led by Kente Williams with 124. His long being 39 yards and just anything he wanted and Ahmad Tanner wanted, they got at will, mostly because that defensive line was pretty gassed for the most of the second quarter. And the kickoff by Cole Phillips, taken by Martin. Flag will come flying in as he tries to get to the 20-yard line. And we will await and see what the penalty was all about. There were 14 penalties in the first half, eight on the Eagles, six on Austin P. Some of them were huge penalties that either negated a drive, possible scoring drive, or a, a chance to pick up a first down. And some were the big ones, not the nickel and dimers, 15-yard penalties. Holding, receiving team, number 17, 10 yard penalty, first down. So Matt Stevens called for the hold and you gotta take some chances. You're trying to get something opened up in the return game and trying to hold that block just a little bit longer to see if you can get Martin free. So now the Eagles will come out first and 10. After the holding penalty, they'll be backed up at the 11 yard line and we were curious to see who the uh, quarterback might be we thought it would be Xander's coming back and it is and it's hopeful that he can get some sort of rhythm they put him in right before the half he needs to get some confidence early another player that really needs some positive yardage and he will not get any on this play is their outstanding running back and he is the man to stop tonight and the govs have stopped him repeatedly as uh, Walker makes the stop on Isaiah Totten and at some point Unfortunately for Trey Oliver, he's going to have to stop handing the ball off because not only is he, is he not gaining yards, he's losing yards just about every time he hands the ball off. Second 13. Backed up at the eight. Xander staring down his receiver. And the receiver, I don't know that ever saw the football as it sailed over his head trying to get it to Nike Martin. Isaiah Norman was right with him step for step. It'll bring up third down. Looked like it was in good position for to at least give Nike Martin a chance to go up and get it. The junior out of Winston-Salem, but another ball that was just kind of lost in the lights, and that's just more the same for North Carolina Central that's on a, offense. That's a tough bank of lights. We're in direct line with it as that ball was coming. You're looking right up into it. He never saw it. So third and 13, and the Eagles were 0 for 7 until they picked up that third down conversion right at the end of the half. The first time they were able to pick one up on third down tonight, the Govs have been able to get off the field. Xanders will loft this one up, and it'll go incomplete. Bring up fourth down. So Coach Hudspeth told Bree Houston at the half, hey, we want to come out and make some adjustments. Don't let this team breathe in a quick three and out. Yeah, and the defensive backs for Austin P and James Tobin and others for Austin P they haven't left the receivers of the Eagles get behind them. Everything's been in front of them. They haven't let up really any big plays. And that's a positive note because they lost some key players like Malik Davis and Kivas Cummings in the secondary last season, and they're not skipping a beat. Seventh punt already tonight for Picaro, and conversely, Devin Stewart, the Austin P punter, He's not even broken a sweat tonight. This one will back up Wilson all the way back to the 34, and then he will head up field, dropped just short of the 40. That's the only thing he hasn't done tonight is break a big return. He's done everything else. And I don't know if we can really fault, fault him. He must be out of gas, just all these big plays that he's had this, this half and looking to add some more as the Austin P offense comes back out on the field and, other than the two turnovers, they've done no wrong in, in the passing and in the rushing game. Wilson with three touchdown catches tonight. Caught one from fellow wide receiver. Benico Harley threw one. Barnes has a touchdown catch from Oatesball as well. 
Jeremiah will throw on the run. This one a little low, trying to get it to Parker. Incomplete will bring up second down as Manny Smith on the coverage trying to stay step for step with probably the quickest, fastest guy on the team. That was a, de a design play to get Oatesfall out in space and have a throw on the run. It's a, it's a tough pass to make to Parker, one that he would probably like back, but it'll be second and ten. Oatesfall 17 of 25 tonight, 167 yards, three touchdowns, has thrown the two picks. Play action here. He'll rifle run across the middle, knocked down as uh, tried to get it to Sumare and Justin Nicholson, who's been very busy tonight at the uh, cornerback, played uh, just one game a year ago. The redshirt sophomore out of Concord, North Carolina, has been tested. Ineligible man downfield, offense, number 72. That penalty's declined, third down. Even though it wouldn't have really mattered if Oatesfall could have put it on target, but he kind of, but he threw his receiver behind him and kind of let Nicholson get back into it and break it up, but a penalty nonetheless remains third and 10. Third and 10 at their 40 after the penalty. Hand off, another great game. Kentel Williams, man, just some gaping holes tonight. And he turns on the speed as he heads upfield as the Gubs get the first down. Steven Stokes, the last man there to stop it. That's so demoralizing. You hold Austin P twice only to give up a 12-yard gain on the ground. Pass play. And brought down at the 30-yard line is Keenan Barnes. Barnes was just standing out there all by his lonesome. Finally, the Eagles shifted their defense over. The Gubs are going quick tempo. We're going to check in with Bree Houston in just a moment. We'll get this play in as the Gubs going again with that lightning quick tempo. Oates fall, looking back and throws. Not on the same page he tried to get to Parker. And Bree Houston was able to catch up at halftime with the head coach of the Eagles, Trey Oliver. Bree, tell us uh, what he told you at the half. I talked to Coach Oliver after the first half, and he said they have to do a much better job stopping the run and running the ball. He said their eye discipline wasn't as good as he hoped, and to do better this half, they have to do better on third down on defense and offense. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Bree. On a second and ten play, just off the fingertips of Kentel Williams. It'll bring up third down for Austin P. Gov's much better on third down tonight than their opponent. That defense done a great job for the Govs. Austin P. seven for 11 on third down tonight. You get a look at Mark Hudspeth, 15th year as a head coach. Last year he spent in the SEC at Mississippi State after a seven-year stint at Louisiana Lafayette. Great job defensively that time by the Eagles. They snuffed that one out. Oatesball tried the quarterback draw, and he was uh, tripped up on this play. Big stop on third down, and it looks like Jerome Foster. We get a look at it, Pat. Yeah, Foster just a, a straight blitz, and he trips up Oatesball. If Foster didn't get him, Oatesball had a chance to get a few more yards. It looks like we're going to get a, a long 49-yard field goal here for Birchfield. This would be his long. Birchfield's career long, 45. Javon Craig, the backup quarterback, the holder, and Birchfield, low liner, has the distance, and he knocks it through. 49-yard, his new career long, and the Govs tack on. Three more, 34-3 as we head to break. Austin P in control at home tonight over the Eagles on ESPN+. Plus. One place to watch, Dodgers, Mets, Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. Austin P. able to add three more points to the score, 34 to three, is Logan Birchfield, redshirt senior, Elizabeth in Tennessee, gets his 15th 
career field goal and his career long. 49 yarder and he boots it through. Cole Phillips will come out and kick off. And again, this the Eagles known for their return game special teams. 20 returns for touchdowns the last seven years, but that is another area that Austin P has done a great job in tonight is keeping those great return men in check. That's one of the few errors tonight on special teams, kicking it out of bounds. To Austin P. first of six home games this season. And there's some great matchups. Next week, Central Arkansas will come in. 2 o'clock kickoff on a Saturday, September 7th. And then two huge games coming up at home to start OVC play. Jacksonville State, Southeast Missouri, the two teams that made the playoffs a year ago, two teams picked one and two in the league, will come in here in back-to-back -back weeks. And as Van Stokes, the radio color commentator, told us early, we'll find out who we are and where we are after those two games. And that's one <laughs> heck of a test, and this is a good start for them, get some confidence going, but that's going to be a different team coming in with SEMO and Jacksonville State. Trying to set up a little screen pass. Govs pretty much stayed home. They applied the pressure to Xanders, but uh, they knew it was coming. Miller will get the tackle for Austin P. Yeah, you've really got to tip your hat to this defense tonight. When you look at it, Austin P lost so many key players. Really only three starters return when you break it down, the players that are in the uh, starting 11 tonight. And they have held a, a team with some weapons. They've held them in check, just three points. And I think the two biggest question marks for this Austin P team was going to be the defensive line and the offensive line. And you'd have to say both of those uh, areas of play have played somewhat of the best football they've played. And for the defensive line, they've held a very impressive running back in Isaiah Totten to very limited yards on the ground and through the air. And, and that's got to give them confidence. So this is a lot of uh, new players, as you mentioned, Barry. John Wesley Whiteside and Mason Harwell, one of their few starts tonight. So, so Xanders, 10 out of 20, 61 yards through the air. And he's staring again at that third down marker. Third and 19, we'll call it, from the 25. Little delay, handoff, nothing doing. Nothing at all up front tonight for this Eagle offense. It seems like every time Micah Sanders has looked up, he's in third and long situations, and that's not – that's not where any offense wants to be is third and 10 plus. And unfortunately for them, that's where they found themselves. And that's why they're one of nine, one of 10 now on third downs. And it's got to be so frustrating for head coach Trey Oliver because he had a lot of high expectations for this offense. And right now they're just not meeting them thanks to this Austin P defense. Yeah, very young team, 37 true freshmen in camp. Did have 90 guys in summer school to try to get the plan implemented, get guys in shape, ready to go. And they're going to take their lumps because of the road schedule. Again, seven road games this year for this young Eagles team. That's going to be that's going to be tough for any team, but especially a team as young as the Eagles. We'll head to a break. Austin P. leading 34-3 on ESPN+. Plus. Back here at Fort Terrace Stadium, 83rd year of Clark, Tennessee. If you've tuned in tonight, not sure where that's located, about an hour north of Nashville. And the Govs tonight, a great showing under their brand-new head coach, Mark Hudson. As Kentel Williams had a big night, he gets a carry here, 138 yards before that carry. One of the few times tonight that Kintel's been wrapped up before he gets three or four or th or 30 yards for that matter. And it might be a little all a little too late here for this North Carolina Central 
team. Yeah, despite the big numbers, he's it's been the aerial attack for the touchdowns. Oates ball throws and incomplete. Tried to get a look out to Jordan Pollard, 6'2 freshman. Ryan Mills in to break that one up. Now Pollard's interesting. Played just one year of high school football, was a basketball player, and uh, he's a guy that's impressed them. And, and we'll he's just going to be one of the athletes for yeah. Austin P. Maybe doesn't get the a ton of production early, but look for him a little later on once he gets more football snaps. As you mentioned, only one season of football in high school. So a player to watch later on in this season. Listed on the two-deep depth chart behind Benico Harley at receiver and got his first look from his quarterback tonight. So third down and nine, Oates ball. Gets it to Harley, and he is tripped up. Nice tackle by the Eagles. Steven Stokes with the tackle. Stokes, a former walk-on. He's out of Baltimore, Maryland. Had a great camp along with Manny Smith, who played, who made the stop a moment ago. As Coach Oliver very uh, pleased with some of the talent that he has in the secondary. Just need to get some reps, get some playing experience. And that's with a lot of the team. As you mentioned, 37 true freshmen came in at a camp this fall. So just any reps is going to be a good rep for this young team. And Nike Martin for the first time tonight back there to return a punt. So we do see Devin Stewart, the red shirt senior. Gets his first action of the night. That's going to lead us to a break. 34-3 all Austin P tonight. Back to Clarksville after you watch this on ESPN+. Plus. Back here in Clarksville at Fort Terra Stadium, the Eagles with the football, and Caldwell returns at quarterback, throws on the move, just throws it away. So Chauncey Caldwell... Did get a little bit of a run in the first half. A couple of series that went one out of two for just three yards and uh, did have two rushing attempts for nine yards in the first half. And we knew we would see him eventually in the ball game. And uh, probably when you just look at the numbers, although Xanders has outplayed him, if you could say that, it's the struggles they've had offensively. But this is probably going to be the guy as the year goes. And I agree. And he offers more – through the ground and also through the air. And just four starts last season, he had 916 yards passing before he unfortunately got injured. So to me, I think later on in the season, he's going to end up overtaking Micah Sanders, and he's going to be the guy. And I and I don't think that's a bad option for them necessarily. He just needs to work back the kinks coming back from injury this season. Travion Pratt, sophomore that Coach Oliver is very high on, made a catch. And he makes back-to-back -back catches. Transfer from Savannah State's had a great camp. Supplies some speed on this team. You see him in the return game as well. Yeah, last year had a <laughs> had an average of 24 yards per catch. So he is he's a guy who can offer big playability. Just haven't seen much of that tonight. So Caldwell and Pratt combined to get a first down for the Eagles. Tough throw and. Short quarters as Tobin there on the coverage as Caldwell going right back to Pratt for the third time. Incomplete brings up second down. And James Tobin is the guy that's directly replacing Kibas Cummings. And so far tonight, he's filled his shoes fairly comfortably. I don't, he hasn't really gotten beat deep, or, and he's made the tackles he's need to make. But the junior out of Louisville, Kentucky, has had a strong game tonight. Started the final game of the year right here on this field against Murray State and a big Austin P win. To wrap up the season, Caldwell flips this one out. A little bit of a rhythm for this Eagles offense. As they get the uh, catch made. Rodney Salisbury Jr. making the tackle. Xavier McCoy with his first catch of the night. He's a senior. Caught 16 balls a year ago, made eight starts. So a little bit of rhythm with Caldwell coming in. As we hit the uh, 7.30 mark, all Austin P 34-3 tonight. And Caldwell will keep it. Design play all the way as he takes it to the 40. And on a third and three, he gets more than that. And they'll move the chains for the second time on this series. Jack McDonald with the tackle. Fired up after that one is Chauncey Caldwell. 
And that's what happens when you get in third and manageable and not in third and 10 to 15. You give yourself a chance. You can run it or pass it without the defense really knowing what you're going to do, and they convert the first down. Empty backfield with five wide in the pass. Incomplete trying to go back to Pratt. Tobin in there. McDonald in there. But certainly good to see for the Eagles fans tuning in. As we think Caldwell could be the man coming back from the ankle injury. And this is the best offensive look of the night that we've seen since very early in the game when the Eagles were able to get that uh, field goal on the board. Pass is uh, caught. Ryan McDaniel. And it'll bring up third down. We'll see if the Eagles can keep this impressive drive alive. That's the third consecutive play. James Tobin has got his nose on the football, really having a strong game tackling-wise right now. Five wide, empty backfield for Caldwell. He'll look over for the play call. Plenty of time on the play clock. Caldwell, 12 career starts for the junior. Was having a big year a season ago. Play clock now down to two. He's got to snap it. They're coming after him. Linebacker blitz McDonald. He got rid of it in time before he was belted. Incomplete. Okay, he stood in there and took a hit that time because McDonald had just a free run right at him. It won't count as a sack for Chauncey Caldwell, but, it, but he, might, he might as well have gotten sacked. Jack McDonald, he showed blitz. I think Caldwell might have thought he was bluffing. Uh, <laughs> McDonald's was far from bluffing as he... Hammers him to the ground. Another third down stop for Austin P. And a familiar face we've seen right now, Adrian Olivo. Fair catch call for and made by Harley. 6.03 to go, 34-3, Austin P. He has got the sense coming out this week, good practice, that Austin Pete was ready to play. We've talked to Coach Oliver and watched a lot of the information on the website, but hadn't really had a chance to see them. No one knew what to expect, but we knew the team in red would be ready to play. Yeah, we got a chance to look at a practice this past Tuesday, and that was really something to, to witness. Just everything was fast. Every Whenever they finished a drill, Hudspeth wanted them spreading to go to the next drill and it's the little things that count and right now it's really paying off for him. So now Prince Mamadou who has uh, been quiet tonight. You can expect that when you've seen Kentel Williams get 12 carries and for 139 yards. And Mod Tanner's got six carries. Mamadou just his second of the night. <laughs> and we are seeing <laughs> some hitting. And that's the way Mamadou plays. You better lace him up when four is on the field. He just really lowered his helmet and uh, uses that as a full-blown weapon. And that defender found out quick what Prince Mamadou's like in the open field. First down play and threw it right to the defender, picked off. Oatesball threw it right to Steven Stokes. And he'll get to pick the third interception of the night. Not what the Govs wanted there. We'll take a look at this, Patton. It's, I don't know if he didn't see him or not. He threw it right to him. Yeah, it, look, it looked that way. As we take a look at this replay, Oatesville staring him down. He's only looking at one receiver and literally threw it right at him. It, it's almost looking like he was aiming for the cornerback there. But an, another weird interception by Oatesville. He's had three of those tonight. One of them by miscommunication, another one off the fingertips, and that one was just full-blown thrown right to him. Yeah, not really sure where he was going with the football. If he was trying to hit the receiver, he was covered, so there was really nothing there. You tuck it and eat that one. As we'll see what the Eagles can do after the uh, interception. They're an opportunistic team. They do force the turnovers. Again, they led the MEAC a year ago in that category, so a first and 10 after an impressive drive a moment ago stalled. And we'll get a flag here on the play. Offense, number two, five-yard so penalty, still first down. 
Didn't get out there in time, and Caldwell's going to get the delay of game. Let's send it down now onto the field and check in with Bree Houston. I have this Austin P jersey to show you guys this patch. Today marks the 150th year of the FCS League, and all year long, teams in the conference will be wearing this patch to commemorate the league. Barry? Thanks, Bree. After the uh, penalty on first down, now first and 15, Tobin in to break up the play there as uh, Caldwell tried to hit McDaniel. Stop the clock with 5.12 to go in the third. Be second and 15. And they've decided to go empty with Caldwell. Let him make a decision and see if he can do something with the legs. And not much there. As he'll be driven out of bounds and we'll get some gubs onto the sideline of the Eagles and the officials come in and try to escort them out quickly. We might start to see that a little bit more as Wontarius Bryant was right in the, the thick of things with Chauncey Caldwell, but those are the hits. If I'm head coach Trey Oliver, I don't know if I need my quarterback taking those with you down 34, just taking rib shots left and right. Nonetheless, he's you can't take the, the heart out of this kid and Chauncey Caldwell. So another big third down, only one third down conversion in the first half, two here in the second half for the Eagles. As they get the ball spotted correctly at the 37. Third and 11, we'll call it, as the clock ticks. Caldwell looking to his right all the way and throws this one back across the middle and incomplete. Almost got him. Trent Taylor in on the breakup. As he almost was finally able to get Martin involved in this one, who's been quiet tonight. That was a great play out of the uh, Brentwood Academy product. Last season he had the pick six against Murray State, and right there, I don't know if he had a whole lot to do with it, but he did just enough to force the incompletion as it looks like the Eagles are going to go for it on fourth down to try to conserve this drive. Four wide again, three out to the right for Caldwell. He'll look back, and there's a flag. No question about that one as Tobin gave up a step to Barnes and had to grab him and right in front of the official easy call to make. As we take a look. Yeah, and, and really one of the few mistakes James Tobin has made all night and is either kind of give up the penalty. Defense, number 16, 15-yard penalty, an automatic first down. Is either going to give up the penalty or possibly give up a touchdown, so he took the lighter and one of the few times he's gotten beat and got behind the defender. That time it was number 81 for them. Yeah, it gave him a little stutter step, a little stop and go, and that's when Tobin grabbed him. So Caldwell, a little delay to Freeman. Freeman will bounce off a tackle, get it to the 20. Pat Walker able to trip him up. I've been really impressed with Pat Walker tonight. He's had had to fill another big contribu contributor in Gunnar Shalato, who tackled anything that moved last season. And right now he's fulfilling the middle linebacker position. And you can't really <laughs> tell any difference if that makes any sense from Gunnar Shalato. I can Caldwell led him just a little bit too much. Trying to get Freeman to look out of the backfield. Jordan Freeman listed as number two on the depth chart, just not has, certainly hasn't been the night for their outstanding running back, Isaiah Totten. And he's back out there now, but it might be time to think about saving him for another day as well. <laughs> and it looked like Cameron Miller, uh, the linebacker, was beat on that kind of wheel route, and he was just praying that that ball was thrown out of bounds, and it did as it's third and nine. 
Cotton with just eight rushing attempts tonight, only five yards. Caldwell's going to go back to the air, and this one incomplete. Looking down there for Pratt. Hooked up with Pratt on a couple of consecutive pass plays to get a first down back on the series of the series a moment ago to bring up fourth down. That was a really dangerous throw. Looked like Isaiah Norman might have gone up for it, but kind of played it safe not to give up the pass interference. Has another fourth down as they try to preserve this drive, converted the last one. Again, four wide, three receivers to the right. Chauncey Caldwell's looking all the way for Pratt, and again, air mails it over his head. And they'll turn it over on downs. Well, they had a couple of receivers run open, but Caldwell just a little too much on it. Doesn't have the touch tonight established so far to go deep yet. And it's almost like he gets a little too excited when he sees his guys open for one of the few times tonight and just can't pinpoint and put that touch on it that he needs. But the receivers are starting to show they can break loose of this Austin P secondary. So the looks are there for the quarterbacks, whether that's Chauncey Caldwell or Micah Sanders. They just have to get the receivers the ball. So the Gubs will take over. They get another defensive stop. Strange night for Jeremiah Oatesball. He's 20 of 33, 193 yards, three touchdowns. All oh, that's great, but three puzzling interceptions. One, you could really give uh, two players blame for that with yep. Wilson and E on the first one. The one was a tip ball. This last one, you kind of shake your head. And you really have to think if it wasn't for those three picks, what would – As I was saying, uh, if it wasn't for the three picks, what would the score look like right now? They're up 31 points. Yeah. Now those turnovers aren't costly right now. They will be definitely in a couple weeks when you play Southeast Missouri and Jacksonville State. We saw Prince Mamadou really get uh, some action in the last series. It's going to be Ahmad Tanner on this carry after the five-yard penalty. And he's going to be a main feature of this backfield is Ahmad Tanner. Prince Mamadou and Ahmad Tanner offer more than what Kentel Williams does in, in terms of just the power back. So it's really got to be demoralizing for a defense when you've been having to run after this fast guy, and now you've got two big guys up in there. Another gaping hole right up the gut, and Tanner really running hard tonight. Kept the legs moving up to about the 32-yard line. And a first down. Very impressed with him after a puzzling year a year ago. He had such a great first season as a freshman. Made the OBC All-Newcomer team. Made six starts a year ago, but could really seem to never get going last season. He's running hard tonight. Oates ball to throw. And it's caught by Mamadou. Nice tackles. He's tripped up at the 34 by Deontay Fair. And right now, Austin P is at 218 yards rushing. Last season, they averaged 179. I think they beat that in the second quarter. It's really just shown how great they've been on the ground. Second and nine after that pass completion. Oates ball. This time, will throw it away. And that was Arthur Randall who got up in J.O.'s face, and he kind of just threw it away, something he probably should have done on a, some of these interceptions, but nonetheless. So third and nine coming up. Seven of 13 tonight on third down for Austin P. Oates ball, and this one will be incomplete. You could tell when it left his hands that he had overthrown that ball. Good coverage down the field against Barnes, who's been active tonight as Keenan Barnes making his presence known. New addition to the team, caught an eight-yard touchdown pass from Oates Ball. And I believe that was Nicholson who was in on, on the coverage, and he's been without a doubt the best player on this defense. He's gone up against Barnes. That's been a, a really fun matchup to watch, and you can't tell the size difference because he's had his – He's been right in his pocket the entire time, and you really have to be pleased with his play if you're head coach, Trey Oliver. And hold everything. Martin is the deep man to, re 
to return the punt. Offside, kicking team, number 12. It's a five yard penalty, still fourth down. Please set the game clock to 228, 228. And that's Corey Peterson back there punting. He's from the land down under, Melbourne, Australia. Only one punt for uh, for our starting punter tonight and Devin Stewart. Not the best punt here. Yeah, it's a tough one for Peterson getting his first look at punter. Just didn't hit that one well at all as he comes off the field. We'll start to see with the 2.23 to go in this third quarter, still a quarter to go. We'll start to see some of the other younger players maybe get in for Austin P. Get some reps. Everyone has uh, really been working hard. Both teams finally get through camp. Oh, the weather's just been unbearable. We get a fairly good night for football tonight. At least it's not in the 90s, but we want to reward these guys if there's an opportunity to get them in like tonight. Let them get that first taste of college football action for some of these freshmen. Caldwell, roll out and throw, and it'll be caught. Ryan McDaniel, the junior, transfer out of Tulsa. And Wontarius Bryant, the leader of that defense, up to make the play. And there's something about game reps, Barry, that you just can't really get in practice. So some of these younger guys that haven't played a whole lot in college football, these are going to be huge for them moving forward, not only this year, but the years to come. First carry of the night for Latrell Mookie Collier. Coach Oliver said we would see him tonight. He's a transfer out of Marshall, redshirt freshman, so he's seeing his first snaps. He's a guy that they think could be a big weapon for this team as they get into MEAC conference play down the road. They still got two more road games before they get to come home. Pass incomplete on second down. He had Francis there on the blitz and got right in the face of quarterback Chauncey Caldwell, and all Caldwell could do was stow it away or take the sack, and like, a, like the veteran that he is, he throws it away to see another down. Third and nine, empty backfield. We saw this set really much of this entire third quarter. Caldwell with the play clock down to eight seconds. Down to two seconds. Will he get it off in time? Just barely. So Caldwell trying to elude the rush. Directing traffic. Now he's going to tuck it and go. And he'll get hit at about the 28-yard line. Cordell Jackson never gave up on the play. Able to knock him down. We'll see where they spot it. It will be a first down. Even though they do end up giving up the first down, Cordell Jackson had 29 solo tackles last season, and you can tell why right there. Gets the open field tackle against Chauncey Caldwell. Uh, he needed nine. He picked up ten, and the sticks will move. Caldwell looking right all the way. Throws this one for his intended receiver, and it'll fall incomplete. Xavier McCoy, who caught a pass earlier in the game. Eight starts a year ago for McCoy. He's a senior on the team. Coach likes his wide receivers, Coach Oliver says. They're an explosive group, had a great camp. Probably his most talented group are these receivers. And as the old coach used to say, they look good coming off the bus because <laughs> all these guys are about 6'4". They definitely looked the part. It's just been kind of troublesome not having a lot of first downs and really a lot of opportunities to make the plays they want. Caldwell just has to throw this one away. And it'll bring up third down.
So once again, it seems like regardless of the quarterback, Xanders or Caldwell, they've looked over at the sticks and seen third down a lot tonight, four out of 16. Moving the chains, Caldwell with three of those here in this half, just over the fingertips, incomplete. Trying to hit the tight end, Quentin Chaplin. He's another big guy, 6'5", 240. And really neither quarterback has really got into a rhythm today, whether that's them interchanging or just both of them having a bad day. That happens sometimes, but unfortunately for the Eagles, not many players on this offense have been able to look upon and really say, I can get that first down. It's been a struggle for them. 0 for 1 on fourth down. Caldwell, he will go down, sacked back at the 40, and the Govs will take over. Matthew Gale, the big sack, the red shirt junior out of Knoxville, was in the rotation a year ago, had 17 tackles on the year, and he's manning that left defensive end position. And there was just one of those meetings at the quarterback there as the Govs just were in on him in a hurry. Absolutely, and he's going to be the leader of the defensive line this year. As you mentioned, one of the few players that was in the roto rotation last year with Jason Williams and a couple other guys, but last season had 17 tackles, and He's going to be the main pass rush guy and also can do it against the run. So the Govs will take over. They get the second stop on fourth down tonight. Pass complete to Tanner out of the backfield, but nowhere to run as he'll be brought down at the 37, it looks like. They'll go 36-yard line. Deontay Fair with the tackle for the Eagles. And Fair was the, a uh, Monmouth transfer, only started one game last season, but he's a guy who's going to have to grow up pretty quick and really give him production from the start. And that will do it for the third quarter. 34-3, to Austin Austin holding over the Eagles. We'll head to a timeout here on ESPN+. Plus. Start of the fourth quarter, Austin P leading 34 to three. What a debut for head coach Mark Hudspeth and his new staff here. Already 451 yards of offense through three quarters. And Tanner once more spins out of a tackle and takes off. Gets up near midfield as we get a shoe tossed out of there. D'Angelo Wilson, he's going to run it, give it back to Tanner. He's done everything tonight, Pat. We talked about D'Angelo. Now he's able to track the shoe down that went flying <laughs> after one of the Eagle defenders tossed it away. He's just been a hero in every aspect, uh, humanitarian and on the football field. Back on the ground we go. Prince Mamadou. You got two great backs in Williams and Tanner, and then you bring in kind of the battering ram and let him just kind of wear people down in the fourth quarter. And that's really going to be something Austin P is going to want to rely on. If they if they can run the ball 30 times, 40 times, 50 times, they're really going to be happy on how the game goes for the most part. Mamadou hit hard. The ball came out after he hit the ground. The officials blew it dead, so the Govs get the first down. Back to the quick tempo. Everything on the ground so far. And we've uh, tipped our hat to the defense with just uh, giving up three points tonight, but the offensive line as well. We've commented these great running backs, but they've had some gaping holes, and that was really the one of the big question marks, the offensive line for Austin P having to replace so many players, and after three quarters of game one, this offensive line is going to be grading out really well. And last year, they technically only had one starter because Seth Johnson filled in for Kyle Anderson once he had that injury. But it's really just been, it's been a group by committee, a committee right now. Kyle Anderton leading the way, but it's not just been him. It's been Bucky Williams, Blake Mitchell, and the rest of the group. So a really great performance for them. Back to Mamadou. The Gubs will keep it on the ground. Four touchdown passes tonight. Three by the starting quarterback, Jeremiah Oatsball. And then Benico Harley, the wide receiver, threw one on a little gadget play, the prettiest play of the night. Benico, a former quarterback, 
hit D'Angelo Wilson for one of his three scores tonight. Keenan Barnes has a touchdown catch, too. Is the game getting a, a bit sloppy now as the flag starting to come out every play? That was Romeo Stancil and, and Barnes, and they were really going at it back and forth after that last run. And got to give it to the referees, just kind of give them both personal f conduct fouls and eliminate any ill will. Third and one, reversing field, Tanner. Ahmad spinning, flag comes flying in as he's brought down at the 20. And we'll see what this one is. Three straight plays, three straight flags. There's actually two flags on the field, so two of them might be on Austin P here. As you mentioned, a little concentration starting to lack here as the game's reeling down. But There are two fouls on the play, both on the offense. Holding, offense. Number two, that penalty is declined. Holding, offense. Number 72, that's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still third down. So Hunter Schmeiser, they'll count that one. So that'll back them up. So we'll see what the Govs will do here on third down before we get to this play. Let's check in again with our sideline reporter. We'll hang on just a moment, get her in place. Looks like it's going to be third and 11, we'll call it. Just getting underway in the fourth quarter, 34-3, to three, all Austin Peay tonight. Oats ball will throw in the third and 11. It's caught by Harley, and he'll make a man miss. Able to shake a tackler, get the first down, and a lot more. Harley with that great speed as Steven Stokes tried to single him up, and he just left him hanging. Yeah, poor... Uh... Harley just absolutely undressed the guy who was trying to tackle him on that one. Just a little stutter move and jukes him out of the way and he gets the first down. A great play, and I don't know if Harley has done anything wrong tonight. Don't a touchdown pass. 6-1 junior out of Birmingham, Alabama. What a weapon as he has converted quarterback to wide receivers, worked his way into the starting role. And just another weapon on this offense. Oates ball will throw. And it's going to be caught and knocked out of bounds again to Harley. Tell you, they were playing so far off of Benico. That was just pitch and catch. And that's something you don't see a lot in today's college football. A guy in Benico Harley who uh, was, was a quarterback saw that there was some competition in, in Javon Craig and also Jeremiah Oatesfall. So he moves down to receiver. Instead of transferring elsewhere, he decides, I'm going to stay here, change up my position, and it's really worked for him. So Oates ball here will give it to Tanner, and Tanner really running with a purpose tonight as he tries to get the Gubs even closer to the goal line. Will we see a rushing touchdown finally tonight? That might be the most physical one-yard run you've ever seen. Uh, two different stiff arms and lowers his head for a yard. Offensive line are saying a touchdown. And finally, we get the signal. So Tanner, really the workhorse on this series, gets it in. Playing extremely well tonight, backing up Kentel Williams, who's had an incredible night. And Tanner, running hard, gets rewarded with a touchdown. So take a look at this replay. It wasn't the first or the second effort. It was more the third effort of him finally getting in, churning those legs and diving into the end zone. Tanner right now with 12 carries for 66 yards. Kentel Williams is going to get a lot of praise for this one, but Tanner's been just as big of a component in this rushing game as really anybody. PAT is good. All Gubs tonight, they are rolling here at home. 41-3, to they lead the Eagles. We'll take a timeout and return to Clarksville after this on ESPN+. Plus.
Well, finally, a rushing touchdown tonight for this Austin P offense. Ahmad Tanner, a three-yard score. Gives the Govs a commanding 41-3 lead. In fact, they trailed in this ballgame. They were down 3 to nothing. The 7-0-1 mark of the first quarter and 41 unanswered points as they are roaring to win number one. They'll be right back here at home next week. We just got a final in from Bowling Green Central. Arkansas beats an FBS opponent. They beat the Hilltoppers out of Conference USA tonight, 35-28. And the Govs will see Central Arkansas here next Saturday. 41-3 with 11-16 to go in this one. And, you know, it's a, a tough schedule when you looked at it, uh, not knowing what to expect out of North Carolina Central with a new coach, but you knew next week going into the year Central Arkansas has had a great program. They'll come in on a high after the huge win at Western Kentucky. And then the schedule again, the Govs will go out on the road for the first time playing a good Mercer team. They're at East Tennessee. So four non-conference games in a row against FCS opponents, and and they'll get uh, each week the test will get tougher and Illegal tougher leading into Jacksonville State. Absolutely. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And next week the, there'll be two hot teams because Austin P is going to feel like they're the hottest team in, in the country after this one. But one of the benefits of playing some of these tougher teams, a lot of them are at home. So the Gov faithful will be able to be, be behind this team and, Give them as much uh, much effort as they can, but first and fifteen after the substitution infraction backs uh, the Eagles up five. And for uh, North Carolina Central, they will be at Towson in Baltimore next week. They'll play at Gardner Webb. They'll finally get a home game September twenty first. And the scary thing for um, North Carolina Central. With the score the way it is, they, they didn't really turn the ball over. So they played a not really a perfect game, but they didn't really force any errors. So that's going to be something. If they start turning the ball over, it could get really, really bad. But they need this running game to kind of pick back up next week because if they can help it, they'd love to just run the ball every time with their workhorse in Isaiah Totten. But, but that really didn't happen tonight. He didn't have the rhythm from the go, and Austin P really sniffed it out from the start. So next week they're going to want to start to run the ball early, and they're going to need it to really be successful this season. Jordan Freeman with the carry that time, and really no one's been able to get anything going in the rushing attack. 42 yards on the ground for the Eagles. Caldwell, in fact, is their leading rusher tonight, their backup quarterback. With 21 yards, Totten just eight carries, five yards. Pass is is caught. Deshaun Stevens, redshirt junior, made nine starts a year ago, and he gets the catch here. And now the officials try to get in and separate players. The ball ended up coming loose, but it was well without the player's knee being down, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Another short drive. I mean, that's just been the kind of way the offense has gone tonight, having trouble converting first downs, and a lot of that is with their own penalties and negative plays offensively being third and long. Well, Benico Harley was back to return, and the Gubs make a quick substitution. They get the lightning bug Jay Parker out there. And it'll take a nice bounce for Picaro on the roll. So we'll see. The Gubs get it right back at 9.08 to go in this fourth quarter. And we're going to head to a break. 41-3, all Austin P tonight. We'll return after this on ESPN+. Plus. Are back. So all hail the queen of spice. That's right. And get a free six-piece when you mobile order through the app. Bring them back. Forty-one to three, Austin P in control. Nine oh eight to go, and the Govs offense back out. 
As we see a change at quarterback, looks like Javon Craig will come in and get his first snaps of the night. He'll hand it off. And we'll see Mr. Will Hoyt get a carry. We're going to see a lot of new faces check into this one. As we head into this uh, fourth quarter. Will Hoyt again with the carry. He'll take it to the 25. And with Javon Craig at a backup quarterback, there was some questions whether he would come back for a se senior season or try to play elsewhere. He's, de he's decided to come back and back up Jeremiah Oatesfall. And you'd have to say, I think he's one of the better backups in the OVC if stuff does happen to go wrong. This is a player who's got a lot of starts under his belt and can uh, really do it. Again, they keep it on the ground. And Will Hoyt, who's a freshman out of Siegel High School in Murfreesboro. Let's check back in with our sideline reporter. Let's toss it back down to the field of Bree Houston. Hi, guys. I'm here with Joe Maynard. He's the son of the people who own the Echo Power Company. Can you tell us some of the things that they're doing for Austin P? Sure. Um, there's been last few years since they've moved to Clarksville, they've actually been helping as much as they can with athletics or, or different different departments, um, but specifically with sports, you know, they've, they've helped with football, softball, baseball, um, and besides Austin B, also the, you know, local schools around here, just helping out and, and trying to improve life for a lot of these kids. A lot of these kids that come in for um, the summer to, to play football, you know, the, the school has to provide lunches and uh, a place to sleep while they're here. I mean, that's not provided by the school. So those those relied on by the donors and by alum and all those kind of people. So my my parents and my, my parents' company, they've, they've actually been helping out a lot with that. Now, you guys are very loyal fans. Your mom came to the game right the day of she, as she was released from the hospital. Talk about that, Lord, just a little bit. I was actually leaving the house today to go take care of an errand and come to the game. My mom had been in the hospital for a month. Uh, this time it was a month. She had a lung removed. She had a lot of medical issues over the last few years. Um, but she, she was pulling up as, as to the house with my dad as I was leaving. And they, an hour later, they're here hanging out. Wow, that's amazing. Now, you got the view from down here in this suite. And guys, I think I'm going to stay down here for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's a good view. <laughs> Thanks for the report, 41 to three. All Gubs here on this uh, Thursday night as we kick off the 150th season. And, and Bree, Bree was talking about how she'd like to stay down down there. Every time I walk through these kind of fortresses, as I talk about them, not too bad of a spot to watch a football game, and especially for a gov governor's win like this one. And if uh, you didn't make it out tonight, we certainly appreciate you watching us, but get some tickets, get here. That's going to be a huge game next Saturday. Central Arkansas, they pulled off the upset tonight as they knocked off. Western Kentucky as they played up in class and beat the FBS Hilltoppers out of Conference USA tonight, 35-28. So Central Arkansas will come in riding high in this Govs team with this huge win tonight. That's going to be a big game that will show up on the radar for the FCS around the country looking at those two teams locking up next Saturday. Absolutely. And at any time uh, an FCS opponent can beat an FBS opponent, that really kind of gets the opposing team they're playing next week. They're going to really going to look at them a little bit differently. This is a team who can play a FBS team and really show their dominance. So uh, what a great matchup that's going to be next week. Austin P looking to carry over from this impressive victory tonight. Hand off to Mookie Collier. 
So we're seeing fourth running back for Austin P. We're starting to see Collier get a few carries. He's listed as third on the depth chart at running back, the transfer from Marshall. And as we look at this North Carolina Central team again, they're going to uh, spend a lot of time on the road, and it's going to be a rough year as far as uh, until they finally can get back home, maybe get a win under their belt. They do have a lot of talent, but a lot of young players that Coach Oliver's got to mold and get them ready for conference play. And really, neither coach knew what to expect tonight. Both guys were a little bit antsy. You want to get that first game under your belt and play it and – you just don't know until the lights come on. And I think if you're Mark Hutzpeth, you certainly feel good about where his team's at. But um, he's got to really get the guys grounded. A great week of practice because they'll get really a big test in here. That's Absolutely. Week. And, f and for North Carolina Central, there's only so much you can tell in practice. So although Trey Oliver was optimistic, he knew he didn't. This is a young team. A lot of them haven't played college ball. So – this one's going to be tough. You're going to have to take this loss, unfortunately. But for a young team to have three of their first three on the road, it's always going to be tough. They just need to bounce back next week and finally getting home week four. Again, Mookie Collier with the carry. Clock stopped. Now it will run as we near the six-minute mark in this one. And, but for all, on the Austin P side, I don't know if there's a better coach that Austin P could ask for other than Mark Hudspeth. He's been around. He's experienced things. He's going to keep this group grounded. He's not going to let them think they're too hot or anything like that. They're going to have to respect their opponent each and every week. And what a battle it's going to be next week. Again, Collier, nice run. He'll take it up to the 33-yard line. And you're right with Coach Hudspeth. And I think – not only does he just have an incredible personality, will do well in any interview setting, but when you look at his track record, the one thing this program has not accomplished is to get into the postseason, never have made it to the FCS playoffs, and that's all he's done as a head coach is play in the postseason five times in the Division II playoffs at North Alabama, five New Orleans Bowls while he was at Louisiana Lafayette in the Sun Belt. His teams just make the postseason. So will he be the first coach to get this governor program over the hump and into the playoffs? Yeah, as you mentioned at Louisiana Lafayette, he was making it into the postseason consistently. Ever since he's left, those, uh, those Cajun fans have found it, how hard it is to make it into the postseason, haven't made it that much since he's left. That's something Austin P so desperately wants. Feels like they were robbed two years ago in 2017, but they've got a really good shot at it this year. And again, uh, last year, Coach Hudspeth at Mississippi State, associate head coach, coached the tight ends. This pass is caught. He completes the process. Finally, Nike Martin able to get involved in this passing attack tonight. And he's a guy that Coach Oliver said is a game changer, and he makes a great catch. He's gotten the ball a lot tonight, just hasn't been able to do a lot with it. But this one, he got behind the corner, Isaiah Norman, as we take a look at this one. And it's one of the few really good throws that we've seen from Chauncey Caldwell tonight. Gives his, gives his receiver a chance, and it was Trent Taylor, actually, who was in coverage, but just didn't turn his head to Trent Taylor and a really good throw and catch for Nike Martin and Chauncey Caldwell. So now Adrian Olivo will come on and attempt the point after. He made uh, his first field goal of his career, the young man, the freshman, 24-yarder, and it back gave the Eagles the lead. They'd given up 41 unanswered before that touchdown. Whistle blows. We'll find out what's going on here. Still the try. So that'll back up the youngster, and he'll try the PAT. And that three to nothing lead for North Carolina Central seems like a, an eternity, eternity ago, and I'm sure it does for those players. It's always tough to kind of give up 
as you mentioned, 41 unanswered. But good to see the fight out of him, and Nike Martin stops that run. Xavier Lanier is the long snapper. The punter, Picaro is the holder. Adrian Olivo out of Plant City, Florida. Well, boot it through. So he's got a PAT and a 24-yard field goal in his debut. 41 to 10 is uh, our new score at the 429 mark. And again, Austin Peay will stay at home, play Central Arkansas here a week from Saturday. And the road trip continues for the Eagles. They're at Towson. They're at Gardner-Webb the next two Saturdays before they finally get a home game on the 21st of September. Again, seven road games. Three straight to start the season for the Eagles. For Austin P, a clean split, a 12-game season. They'll play six at home, six on the road. Two good tests coming up for them on the road in FCS play before they get into uh, conference play as well. And talking about the schedule for the Eagles, head coach Trey Oliver was asked about it in the press conference. He says, obviously, I didn't make the schedule. That's not how we <laughs> wanted it, but... His team has just got to get through it, and no matter how they do, if they can go th through this one 2-1, and one, what a great road stand it could be. But this one's going to be a tough one. There's going to be a lot of film that they want to correct, and it can really only go up from here. You had a really good start holding Austin P often somewhat at bay, but it got bad quick. This one taken short at the 25. And Mamadou will get tripped up. We'll see what the Gubs do and see how many new faces we see with 423 to go in this one. Again, a busy night in OVC play as some of the uh, conference members tonight playing NAIA D2 programs. Seven games tonight in conference play. Two more coming up on Saturday. Tennessee Tech will play at home, and TSU will host their annual John Merritt Classic at Nissan Stadium on Saturday night as well. Anxious to see as we get closer to conference play uh, how things will shake out because you know Jacksonville State's going to be in the mix till somebody beats them. They're always going to be on top. But Southeast Missouri knocked them off last year, and Southeast got into the playoffs, and they uh, were up big at halftime over Southern Illinois. That's a good team, a very good quarterback, and we'll get to see them come in here. Back-to-back -back weeks, the two OVC preseason favorites. Absolutely, and I think in terms of the OVC, this is going to be one of the most competitive years. In years past, you've had Jacksonville State just running through opponents, but last year, Got their first loss to Southeast Missouri. They've shown they can be beaten. So this gives teams like Austin P a chance in a couple weeks' time to know that this team's beatable. It's been done. Why not us? And I'm sure that's what Coach Hudspeth is going to tell his team. Why not us? Again, Javon Craig is in at quarterback. We're seeing a lot of young Mr. Will Hoyt. And flags will come out. <laughs> Three of them. <laughs> A host of flags. If you have one, throw it. <laughs> 303 to go, and when you're wanting that clock to run, more flags come out. That's usually how it goes, doesn't it, Barry? <laughs> so we'll hear again from Mr. Brad Carell. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 90, 15 yards. An automatic first down. So we've had a, we've had a few of those tonight on both teams. That was Marcel Bell for North Carolina State, and uh, the head coach for 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 the Eagles has just sent him in the locker room and told him to hit the showers early. First and ten at the 47 for Austin P. And Will Hoyt really getting some work as he gets it across to the 49. But you mentioned Javon Craig earlier. And, and uh, well, just a great teammate, the senior out of Chattanooga. 
He's uh, he's had some great moments here at Austin Peay. 13 career starts. He made three a year ago. That's what people yeah. tend to forget. Uh, and then he got injured, but has really put up some great numbers. 11 touchdown passes in his career. 10 touchdown runs. A great uh, yards per uh, rush, 6.6 .6 for him. So he is a great weapon. And we're finding another running back, just what the opponents are thinking. Wait a minute. <laughs> they got three guys that no one can stop, and then they bring in this freshman, Leland Wilhoyt, and he's putting up numbers. They're going to have nightmares of the, <laughs> the letters RB tonight. Right. But for Javon Craig, even if he doesn't get in, what he provides off the field for some of these other younger quarterbacks that we won't see maybe this year but in years to come, like Bryce Robinson at a Clarksville Academy, he's going to provide real leadership and real veteran a presence to this team so credit to him for staying put even though he's not going to be the the number one option at the quarterback position but what he provides leadership wise is going to be priceless for some of these young guys and you know we've seen uh in recent years and it's it's rare if you can get a quarterback through all 12 games you know you can ask the titans right. up the road about that <laughs> or down the road in nashville and it's good to have someone like Javon Craig. If anything were to happen, injury-wise, any issue, you've got a veteran signal caller that can come in, and, and really the team will not miss a beat. He's, he's that good and certainly capable of starting on this team. Again to Will Hoyt. He'll try to bounce it outside, wrapped up at the 25. Just a great performance all around tonight. For the Govs as they came out with that really breakneck pace tempo that wore down this Eagle team. And then the defense just did their job. They gave up the field goal, if I'm not mistaken, came off the turnover uh, where the three points were given up after that until they gave up the score here late. They have played extremely well. And they, you know, you talked about Totten. He was our highlight player, the running back for the Eagles. And how impressed you were when you saw him on tape against Duke a year ago, and tonight he was just completely shut out. Absolutely, and you got to give credit to this. Illegal Austin substitution, P. offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. So I was saying you got to give a, a credit to this Austin P team. They faced adversity in their first game. They threw an interception in the red zone. Maybe you start to question what you're doing, but absolutely not. They kind of fought back and. Scored 41 consecutive points, so credit to them. Although not the biggest adversity early on in this one, it's always good to kind of fight back against the other team. Now the clock will start. Govs in victory formation. One more kneel down by Craig. And that should do it. So not the way that Coach Trey Oliver wanted to see his debut go. He knew he was going to be for, in for a dogfight here on the road. He wanted to weather the storm, but the storm never let up tonight as Austin P will get the win. And for Mark Hutsmith, his debut a success, 41-10. to 10. All three phases, when you look at this, he's not going to be pleased with the penalties, but his team was ready to play, and uh, they never let up. Absolutely not, and I don't think you could tell that this is, was a new head coach. It looks like it looked like this group had been knowing what they wanted to do for years, but this is a young team for Austin P. Some holes to fill, and for at least for this game, it looks like they filled them for right now. But I don't I, I don't know if Hudspeth necessarily could have expected a 41 to 10 victory, but nonetheless, a great game for Austin P. As they move on to Central Arkansas next week. All right, the winning head coach, Mark Hudspeth, on the field. Let's toss it down to Bree Houston. I'm told there is more than 1,500 fans here on the field tonight. We've got an incredible body here. They're hungry. World Champions. have a championship. We really appreciate them showing up tonight. We can't do it by ourselves. It's community, it's students, alumni, band, cheer, dance, football team, administration, team effort. Good start, first, first, first game. 
So we've got a lot of things we got to go back and improve on. Football, turnovers, and then penalties really kept us out of the end. We should have a couple more touchdowns. Now you have your your different different ways to win. What do you guys do? Well, the one, you know, us, we want to play with great effort. And, you know, I thought we did in the first half. Didn't care if we did in the second half. Next week, we have four. Mark Hutsmith, we apologize for technical difficulties as our final numbers come up in Patton. This was total domination tonight for Austin P. Any phase you look at, rushing attack, passing attack, they were totally dominating. Really, the, the final score is going to be the, the eye-jumping stat for me. They were somewhat favorites coming into this one by double digits was Austin P. I just didn't see this level of domination. 272 passing yards and 260 rushing yards. That's just great offense and really good execution by this team that needed some confidence with their new head coach. And my goodness, did they get it. Austin Peay's rushing attack tonight. Again, just total domination. 139 yards out of Kentel Williams. Ahmad Tanner was 66. Passing attack. There were some turnovers tonight, some interceptions, but uh, but some great uh, touchdown passes tonight, not only by Jeremiah Oatesball, but Benico Harley. <laughs> right, but for, for Jeremiah, or uh, for Oatesball, rather, he had three interceptions. Those didn't really affect the game tonight, but those are things that will affect him later on, especially in OVC play against SEMO and against Jacksonville State as we take a look at some of these highlights. And you're not going to see a lot of Devin Stewart in here, Barry. It's going to be a lot of offensive highlights, especially with Kintel Williams. To me, I think he was the player of the game. He set the game tone from the start. He really provided Austin P with that initial jump that they needed and really led this team to victory along with Ahmad Tanner and Prince Mamadou. I really like the, the ground game Austin P had tonight. Yeah, three big touchdown catches for D'Angelo Wilson tonight. Touchdown catch for Keenan Barnes as well. Did see those turnovers that we've talked about with uh, Jeremiah Oatesball. He'll go back and look at the tape for sure and and um, correct that. He had a tip ball tonight. He had a miscommunication with Wilson on one play, and then one we're not sure what he saw. And I'm sure he'll want to look at the tape, and he'll cringe when he sees it. But J.O. led the team well tonight, but – Everything was clicking, and the defense, so many question marks, really just three starters back. They played lights out. And it all started with the big guys up front stopping the ever-so-powerful Isaiah Totten from the ground game. That's what North Carolina Central wanted to do from the start. They wanted to control the pace with the run game. Austin Peay just didn't let them do it. I, North Carolina Central ended up with 6 of 20 from third down. They just didn't stay on the field long enough to have success offensively as we continue to take a look at some of these offensive plays. But they're going to have to start back from square one offensively for North Carolina Central. So happy bunch of gubs tonight as they leave the field. Mark Hudspeth 1-0 and as the head coach of Austin P. They'll face Central Arkansas next Saturday, 2 o'clock, the kickoff time. You can see that right here on ESPN+. Plus. So for Pat and Cook and Bree Houston, I'm Barry Gresham saying so long from Clarksville where the final score is 41 to 10. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.